15, 2019 meeting of the Downtown Development Authority. At this point, I'd like to open public comment. If you're for public comment, please raise your hand, be recognized by the chair, and come up, give your name. Anybody out there for public comment? Previously, I spoke about the lack of on street. Could, could we have your name for the record, please? You don't publish comment in minutes, so. Could we have your name? Okay. It's, it's Janice Wagman. Thank you. Previously, I spoke about the lack of on street handicapped parking in the downtown. On today's agenda, item 11, you are proposing converting some of the street angled parking only spaces to handicapped. Since angled spaces are only found on Washington and in three small areas, this leaves a huge portion of the downtown inaccessible to handicapped individuals. As you know, starting in 2016, Birmingham converted 70 on-street spaces, both angled and parallel to handicapped spaces. Unlike your infrastructure committee, who concluded, who, quote, concluded it could provide a false sense of security or protection to the individual using the space, Birmingham, Birmingham had confidence that the citizens could assess the safety of these spaces for their needs. By making phone calls, I learned the only established ADA parking requirements in existence apply to parking lots, not on-street parking. The Department of Justice ADA division has zero specifications for on-street handicap parking spaces. The Great Lakes ADA Center of Michigan defaults to international building codes, which has zero specifications for on-street handicap parking spaces. And according to the city engineer of Birmingham, they did not go to the, go to the time and expense of implementing their solution without due diligence and relying on Carl Walker engineering firm to assist them. Again, they have on-street parallel parking spaces easily identifiable to the public. Frankly, I'm confused. You say business is down, but you are excluding possible patrons of your businesses. You are spending tens of thousands of dollars, and the city has spent millions to construct these, these parking structures and you to promote them. But it appears you do not want to give up strategically located nearby on-street parking spaces to benefit the handicapped. If parking structures are so convenient that everyone who is able to will want to use them, why not adopt Birmingham's model? scattering handicapped parking spaces throughout the downtown. Legally, you need to do nothing. But what is the right thing to do? What I see proposed today is very far from the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Wolf. Thank you, Janice, for doing due diligence more than a lot of people on, in office do. I, uh, I'm uh, elderly, and I can see, uh, I mean, I'm 74 now, not that elderly, but I can see myself having problems in the future. The only thing I'm unhappy with Birmingham is that they charge their handicapped parking the, uh, the same uh, excessive amount of uh, a quarter for 10 minutes, and I think that needs to be cut in half. Ferndale, by the way, uh, I think they still. I think they still have half off for a senior. Uh, I mean, for handicapped parking in, on the, on in their lots. Now, these are just some observations. When I first moved to Michigan, I learned that Birmingham had a problem filling its new new parking structure, and uh, I also learned at the uh, one of the downtown meetings that uh, Birmingham assesses downtown businesses to maintain their program of allowing two hour free parking until midnight in the structure only. I also learned that in the last year or two, they allowed free parking for a month or two on Saturdays as a promotion, and this was very, very successful. I learned this from a waiter who worked at a restaurant in uh, Birmingham. He, we, I got into a conversation with him at Ale Mary's. I am aware of the uh, bonding obliga obligations for the new structure, but note that there are a few city parking structures anywhere that make a profit as they are always about one-third empty as a rule. I also noted that uh, that is one prominent business owner here today has told me that if, uh, if, if businesses were asked to contribute more 
to allow two hour free parking to midnight that this would be create a uh, big uh, 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 reaction of no uh, now I also learned that the city uh, I mean that the DDA is going to contribute around 65,000 if that's the figure towards promoting downtown uh, parking at the at, at its structures uh, I suggest that as a trial balloon you try the two-hour free parking until midnight for at least three months and I can guarantee you that now that that will make Royal Oak competitive with Birmingham, Ferndale, any other surrounding city, and even more competitive than with Detroit. And I, I think it would attract a lot of people. And if business explodes, as, as I think it would, uh, the uh, you you will want to contribute more money. Instead of throwing it away, not well, throwing it away on special events, on top of special events, you know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a change. I think you need to get with the pro same, pro some of the same copy, look at copying some of the same programs surrounding cities you successfully. Uh, I also had a, uh, an idea that uh, there's, a, I heard you want to replace all the street lights in Royal Oak and make them better. How about instead having beautiful, gorgeous, Victorian-style double lamp street lights at the gateways to the city saying, welcome. Put these type of street lights in our park. Put these type of street lights at the entrance to the parking structure. Now, also, the reason for my wanting the two-hour free parking to 12 midnight uh, is that this will encourage people parking on the street to use the structures. I mean, if they can come in any time and have two hour free parking, that, you know I mean? It, you can't beat it with a stick, okay? That's all I have to say, thanks. All right, thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Good afternoon. Clark Campbell, East University, Royal Oak. <clears throat> I've been trying for a long time to get to this meeting, and I'm finally here, and I almost didn't make it yet again today. But I am formally requesting you, you move this meeting to a time of day that people like me can attend. I have been trying to get here for months and have had business issues come up that have kept me from attending. I suggest that a 7 p.m. start time would be most welcome for those of us working throughout the day who would really like to come up here and talk to you people about things going on in and about the city. I have a lot of items to cover here. I'm going to jump into those, but I hope you're taking notes, as I believe our city manager normally does in the city commission meeting, because I am going to hit on a variety of topics. And I absolutely support uh, what Mr. Wolf was just talking about in terms of the graduated parking rate. But starting out with parking problems, you had a few business owners here in your last monthly meeting claiming that there was no parking problem in the downtown. If I had a business on Washington, then I might agree. They have ample parking, deck parking available on Washington. If, however, I owned a business on Main Street, it is a completely different story. There is a parking problem, and it was self-created. If you regularly go to Farmer's Market or Sunday Flea Market, guess what? Parking problem. When the 11-mile deck is completed and open, it should relieve the problem. Will it be the same as it was? No, the surface parking is gone and is not coming back. Will it be better? No, I don't think so. It will be different. Will there be plenty of parking in the new deck? Hopefully, yes, at least until Henry Ford opens its door, then we don't know what's going to happen. I had a real problem with how this entire project was choreographed. It did not need to be as painful as it has, to, has been. There is no reason that all of the parking between 11 Mile and 3rd disappeared all at once. The area from 2nd to 3rd sat dormant for at least six months after the groundbreaking. The existing farmer's market parking at that time was immediately cut off from Main Street, 
when the deck and the Boji project took away the walking access, used to be able to walk from second straight over to Farmer's Market, that disappeared as soon as the groundbreaking took place. And as well as the sidewalk on 11 miles been closed for all that time. It's just finally opening back up. The new Center Street parking deck was constructed within a very small working footprint. I watched that it was an engineering masterpiece, how that went up. This one at 11 mile could easily have been done that way as well and left surface parking and or access open during that whole time. Parking rates. Oh, I'm sorry. One more campaign thing. I know you're talking about the parking campaign and why not use something in my mind that worked and that was that Birmingham had a very successful campaign and the slogan they used was basically as simple as hit the decks. They used that as their mantra and it was an incredibly successful campaign to get people thinking about parking in the decks. My question about parking rates is who determined the rate structure being proposed? And again, I'm echoing uh, what Mr. Wolf had just said. Um, why not do what Birmingham does and give the first two hours free regardless of when you go in or after five, five o'clock at least charge me an hour, an hourly rate with a maximum of five dollars. If I am downtown for dinner and a stroll around and done in two hours, I should only pay maybe three dollars for parking, not five. If I am just briefly going somewhere for less than an hour, a dollar fifty would be a fairer price. But as I said, getting the two hours free up until that time would be awesome. Um, and certainly it would be, uh, seem to be a great move to do if while we're waiting before Henry Ford actually opens the doors and fills up that parking deck to take advantage of that space and really encourage even more people to get in there. Also, right now I believe that the 6 and Lafayette deck is a $3 flat rate after 5 p.m., which surprised me when I saw that posted on the deck itself, and I was wondering if that rate is going to remain for that deck, or are we going to $5 across the board? Downtown status. Walking around our downtown on Saturday on the way home from the flower sale, the condition of the city sidewalks, in my estimation, is not good. Do we really have people walking around checking on these things? We say that we do, or at least that is what we reported to the Main Street America group recently. If the city expended one-tenth of the effort it does in writing up parking tickets, then we would have a downtown walking conditions we could be proud of. Again, I say stop planning to spend taxpayer money on alley environments and get busy repairing and maintaining the downtown we walk through. A walkable environment does not contain random trip hazards any, every 10 feet. And by that, I mean we have bricks in the sidewalk that are broken, splayed, missing. And this was just in the section from 6th Street on the west side going up to about 4th Street. I was just appalled at the condition of the sidewalk. Today on your agenda, you're talking about the 11 mile deck opening events. My question is, have any of you been to the roof of the sister structure, the new Center Street parking deck? If you have, you will know that it is not designed as an observation deck. You have to jockey for position to take in the view. Will there be police or security on the roof to keep people and small children from climbing out on or standing up on the ledges? Mr. Campbell, you're yes. going to need to wrap it up. Are we insured for events held on the roof? What if you have a windy day? You certainly don't want items blowing off the deck on the street below, and you definitely don't want anyone getting injured as a result of something like that. Uh, one other very important question Campbell, I had. I'm going to need you to wrap uh, it up. Yeah, please. this is this is a, a issue I have again about your meetings. When and where are the committee meetings of this group held? I'm unable to locate that in a published area. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else out there for public comment? Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Bring it back to the table. I'm going to look for. Uh, Motion on the number three, the approval of the meeting minutes. Move to approve. 
Move to approve by Director Riley. Second, Second by Director Yesbeck. Any discussion? Seeing none, I call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. <coughs> uh, I know we got people here on the uh, Vegans and Vodka event. I'm going to. I'm going to move that right past, uh, right after monthly expenses here. So we're going to look at our monthly expenses, uh, item number four. Is there any questions or any? Uh, Director I, I've Riley. got one question. I think I direct, I'll direct this to Sean. Um, the, the Metro Times, the ad purchase for Best of Detroit, was that for uh, celebrating the best uh, downtown shopping district? Yes, that was. It also uh, recognized all the other winners in Royal Oak. Okay. So we, we took out an ad in that edition. Correct. Supporting that. Okay. And then, then just one other one. There's one up there for March and April services. That's the last payment on that one? Yes. Yes. Okay. Anybody else with any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on. I'm going to move, uh, I'm going to move up this uh, Vegans and Vodka event thing now right in front of the parking promotion plan. And, and uh, Sean, I think maybe I'll turn this to you. Sure. So the vegans and vodka events. Um, I was recently contacted by a uh, downtown business owner who's been working with the uh, Royal Oak Restaurant Association who wants to uh, uh, throw an event Friday and Saturday. I believe it's the second weekend of July, July 12th, or July 12th and 13th of Friday and Saturday. Um, we also have the... Uh, the event organizer here to uh, Johnny Prepolik. Um, you know, he'd be uh, able to fill in any detail. Um, he's essentially asking that the DDA support this with a $20,000 sponsorship uh, up front to basically get startup costs up and running for this event, uh, after which he would reimburse the uh, DDA the $20,000 sponsorship after the event. Anyway, open this up. A um, couple questions. If the, uh, and I'm not sure who to direct them to, Mr. Pepper. I'll tell you what, why don't uh, Johnny and if you have your promoter or whoever, come on up. Um, and, and, and I apologize if the questions seem a little rudimentary, but um, oh, we, we got this a, li a little late. All right, so the, the 20000 it, it's a uh, in front ask, so you can go out and procure different, di whether it's deposits and upfront costs. Deposits correct. and all that. Um, and Basically, the way I'm reading it, it, it'll be paid back. Is that a, is that a guaranteed payback, or is that a? I mean, what if what if the event is not as successful as we all hope it is? Well, you know, we had this conversation um, uh, at the committee meeting yesterday. Um, I guess the only other event uh, that is like this is Arts, Beats, and Eats, where the DDA provides money up front and gets paid back based on based on parking. Based on parking, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's the agreement to it. Um, uh, we haven't put anything in writing yet. I think that they were, I think that uh, um, Tim and Don both said that they probably want, want something in writing. So at that point, I think those kind of details will probably be, be hammered out. Um, but uh, the proposal I wasn't necessarily offering a guarantee, um, as it sits today. Okay. And then, um, then j just, just so I understand the, 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 the parts in this, um, who exactly is putting on the event? Is it, is, it, is it you? Is it the promoter? Is it the restaurant association? And again, I apologize for these questions. but That's all right. That's no, fine. Uh, it's the restaurant association. Okay, it is a restaurant association event. Yes. Okay, and then, <clears throat> cause, and, and I'll, I'll just be honest, when I, when I first heard about this and saw this, my one concern was that we'd be sponsoring something that's a little bit more provincial to this side of town. But but if everybody, if the restaurant association and you've got people on Washington who are on board, that personally makes me feel better about, about the situation. So Yeah, the you know, the uh, um, idea kind of percolated through the thought press of, of trying to figure out how to promote the culinary image of Royal Oak. You know that's been a topic that's uh, been discussed by a number of business owners. I've, I've I've sponsored some discussions and meetings that actually Sean has put together with local business owners to talk about that. 
And, you know, frankly, it's not that easy to come up with those strategies because when you look at our competition like Detroit, you know, they're opening so many new restaurants and they bring in chefs from out of town that have Michelin stars and James Beard Awards. You know, coming up with a way of distinguishing our existing businesses in Royal Oak isn't really that simple. And, um, you know, Vegans and Vodka is really an opportunity for us to identify ourselves in a growing demographic and a growing market. The vegan market uh, is a growing market. Um, I was told that 34% of millennials eat plant-based diets. And there is no community that holds a major vegan festival. Um, so it's kind of an opportunity for Royal Oak to have an event that presents an image of a more um, contemporary and cutting edge culinary scene. Um, so that's really where you know, the basis of the event came from. And to a great extent, um, we kind of benchmarked pigs and whiskey in Ferndale. Okay. I mean, if you look at that event, it's been around for a number of years now and has grown to a substantial size and uh, is really kind of a hallmark for that community uh, for, in terms of festivals in the summer. And um, so the basic structure is, is, is kind of very similar to it. We're just going after the vegan market, which, you know, pigs and whiskey probably isn't that popular with the vegan market. Um, <laughs> So it's an opportunity for us to, you know, zero in on a, a demographic and a, and a growing market, and uh, I'm all for that. I just got, I just got two more questions on the, um, and, and again, I just looked at this real fast, but on the uh, breakdown here, yeah. the pro forma um, for estimated revenue, it says uh, in the green based on five thousand event goers, and right. then right below that on their single tickets, it's it's a thirty thousand dollar line. It says estimate that six thousand single <laughs> tickets will be sold to walk up event goers. So the tickets would be for individual drinks or food samplings. Okay. It's really going to be a sampling event. You know, the okay. food. Okay. Uh, I see. So when you're saying single tickets, it's a, it's a actual single ticket per yeah. item. Okay. Right. Last question I have is, is on the um, revenue breakdown. Sure. Um, not the revenue breakdown, but the income breakdown. Assuming yeah. this all goes great, which we all hope, especially if we're going to put 20 k out there. Um, the profits are split up between the participating restaurants and the CWG, which is the, I'm assuming, the promoter. Correct. Okay. And then and then where I, where I got a little confused, I saw there's a participating restaurant line and then RORA income line. Correct. So the residual would go to the asso restaurant association. That's correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, they're, they're the charity that's going to actually pull the uh, event license. Okay. And the, and, and the liquor license. And then that, that'll go into their coffers. Correct. Okay. And the last thing that I'll say is um, one thing that I really like about the event is that and you guys are going out there and utilizing the alley right out of the box and having the bravado to do it while the construction's going on, which I think I think is a great thing. I mean, I, like, I, I think it's great that we get people used to coming to that alley and, and, and going to that. I think that's, I think that's a, another super feature of this event. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Um, I have a couple of questions. Okay. I've been following this event peripherally for a couple of months now. I think it's a great idea. Um, but I just got this document today, and the yep. font is really small. So I'm having a Perfect. <laughs> the font is very small. <laughs> so I, I hear you. Just for the sake of <laughs> I all of my us, <laughs> for the sake of all of us here and, and the people watching at home, could you describe the event, the footprint, where it's going to take place. Um, just yeah, absolutely. Give us so the event would take place in the new alley um, from 11 Mile down to 3rd Street. And uh, the idea is to have um, 12 restaurants and six vodka brands um, uh, participating in a tasting and competition. So uh, we envision there being six groups of tents each consisting of three 10 by 10 tents with the each restaurant having one 10 by 10 tent on the ends and a bar in the middle. Uh, the restaurants will be uh, competing um, in terms of uh, the vegan food uh, items that they're, they're, they're selling. Um, the restaurants will be responsible for providing three uh, cocktail recipes, vodka cocktail recipes, which they will also be competing for. 
Um, so there is a, a touch of a, a craft cocktail element to this. And um, uh, we also plan on having a wellness center, um, which we're hoping we can get Henry Ford to participate in, uh, where they will offer information to people that either are interested in going to a plant-based vegan diet and the requirements, the nutritional requirements of going down that path, or just providing more information to existing vegans on you know, some of the uh, uh, f foods and supplements that are available to provide the nutrition that some vegan diets are, are, are short on. Um, so that's kind of going to be the wellness aspect of it. Um, and then uh, based on the direction we get from the police department, we're hopefully going to put a stage on 2nd Street. Uh, if not, it might be on 3rd Street <laughs> so that we have entertainment uh, to draw people to the event as well. And uh, um, it'll last, uh, it's basically going to be Friday evening, uh, Saturday all day into the evening, uh, starting at 6, I think, on Friday and ending at 11, and starting at 1 on Saturday and ending at 11. And uh, um, that's it. And you said it's a, a, a ticketed where you buy samplings. Um, Correct. Or? Well, there's going to be a package. There's going to be a food pack tasting package and a drink tasting package that you can pre-purchase. Uh, then if you don't do that, if you come the day of, you can buy as many $5 tickets as you want, and then each of the food items and the drinks are going to be $5 samples. I'm a huge Walt Disney World fanatic, and Epcot does the International Food and Wine Festival, uh -huh. and their ticketing is exactly the same. So it's a is great it? idea. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. That's all I got. Thank you. That was fine. Just a couple quick. You already answered the question about the hours. Um, um, Looking over this performer, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I, and I don't want people to have a misunderstanding, and I, Director Riley kind of uh, alluded to it where it, the, it says profits and, and such to the restaurants. I'm, I, 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 am I wrong to assume that that's more of a reimbursement for their goods? Is that? Well, if you look at the costs, they're around 50 grand. Okay. No, I'm talking about to the individual restaurants. The shares that they are going, the share of the income that's going to come in is going to go to reimbursement of their costs. Isn't that correct? Yes. They're actually going to get, they're actually going to get a portion of the ticket sales that they get at their particular tent. Gotcha. So if you sell nothing, you're not going to get anything. If you sell everything, you're going to get everything. It's not going to be an equal uh, distribution to the participants. Gotcha. Okay. And then, um, um, so the way that this that Gary alluded to here, the way that this ticket is, there really isn't a true entry fee. There is no entry fee. There is no entry fee. Correct. Okay. Um, so you can go, and if you want to participate, you just purchase tickets that's, that's while correct. you're there or in advance. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I, I guess I'm assuming that um, through the special event permit and working with the police, that because there is an alcohol event that it's going to be kind of enclosed? Yes, it has to be. In both ends, okay. Um, I think there's a line item for fencing in there. Gotcha, okay. Um, I think that's it. I, I, I like this idea. I like. I, I don't think we do enough here in Royal Oak to uh, promote the culinary um, options that we have here. So uh, I, I, I like the concept. I know. Well, but Ken, the, the Consumer Marketing Committee did meet on this last night. Uh, they are forwarding a recommendation to you that you do allocate the twenty thousand uh, dollars for this event to the Restaurant Association. It would, based on the recommendation from last night, be paid upon the time uh, they actually submit for a special event permit to the city. So that's going to be the trigger to. To, to actually allocate it, uh, and it's subject to an actual agreement to to be drafted. Uh, and I believe the last provision from the committee last night was that uh, DDA be the first to receive its twenty thousand back at the revenue uh, end of it. So you'll see in the spreadsheet you're not you're not in there as a sponsor and you're not in there as a recipient, but that would be added. Uh, so I, I think for those of you that were at the committee meeting last night, I think I 
summarize what the committee's recommending to the to the board. That's the way I remember it. Yeah. Yes. Why, what, one more so, so, so Tim, basically the, the way it would be written, we have basically first position then? Right. Okay. Uh, was, I have one more comment. Um, you, are, you are at risk of, if sure. you don't make any money, you're not going to get anything back. Sure, but. sure, sure. If, it, if the a rainstorm blows through and, right. yep. Um, one more thing, kudos on the uh, $200 fee for the restaurants. Um, that's the, for entry, I think that's great. I know, uh, I can remember, there's, one event that's been in town, I know, where they charge an exorbitant amount for a restaurant to show up. And they went national because they gave our, our local restaurants like a, I think it said three thousand dollars. It was like twenty four hundred dollars to get in or something like that. So, yeah. Um, I think that's another great feature in the event, the two hundred dollars per restaurant to get in. So, congratulations on that. Yeah, we wanted to make this something that was good for the restaurants. Yeah. No, great. I'll move the uh, recommendation from the Consumer Marketing Committee. I got a motion by Director Safaya. Second. Second by Director Baglio. Do we have any further discussion or questions for Chef Johnny? No, no questions. I, I think just the feeling with the committee was that uh, this is, as Chef said, uh, modeled after a premier event in Ferndale. It's been successful year after year. Um, it incorporates food, food and alcohol, and uh, it's an opportunity to take advantage of the, our downtown, which is the best downtown for having events, uh, just by the very nature of, of how our downtown is situated. So uh, this is something that may need a few years to develop, but it's a great concept, and uh, it's not a, a lot of risk. And it is um, highlighting one of the areas that we've intended to highlight this this new alleyway so it has a really it checks all the boxes and a great opportunity I think to promote the downtown in a different way okay. all right. anybody else all right, thank you thank you very much I call the vote? Yep. Uh, see, there's no other uh, comments I'm going to call for the vote all those in favor aye, aye. those opposed motion carries Before you go on to the parking promotion plan, I, I want to bring to the, the board's attention and remind you uh, where uh, this started. Uh, you, you'll recall at your April meeting, you allocated $60,000 towards uh, providing uh, free parking when the uh, parking deck opens, the 11-mile parking deck, uh, plus a portion of that for the promotion of it. Um, what I passed out... Um, was a synopsis of revenue or potential costs if the DDA is going to provide free parking for the all of the decks in the downtown, which would be center, sixth, fourth, and 11 mile. And you'll notice 11 miles uh, vacant because there's no past history of it uh, for the month of June a year ago, uh, so that you've got an idea of the costs that you could be looking at. Uh, for, for providing free parking for that those dates in uh, June uh, at all four of those decks. Uh, in addition to the next three items on your agenda are kind of tied into the promotion uh, grand opening of that. Um, so I just wanted to point out that you've, uh, using the June 2018 revenue stream, there's about 67000 $750 for the three existing decks, plus whatever tickets revenue would be covered by the DDA for the new deck. Uh, so that, that then in and of itself exceeds what you've already allocated uh, towards this project. So you, before you start voting on all three of the next few items, I, I wanted to point out that that was, was there. The parking promotion is item five is looking at twelve grand. Uh, the parking deck grand opening item six is looking at two grand. <coughs> the pedicab promotion uh, might be around sixteen thousand. So you're looking at a potential increase of in order to pull off all of these, 
beyond the 60,000 you allocated in April. I just wanted to give you that overview before you started individually voting on the next three items. And, and Tim, this is this is based on 18. Right. And so this was this is true history. Those are actual. Whereas if we're promoting free parking and we're going to so we're going you're going to pay we're gonna, dollars. Are we going to pay these dollars or are we going to get tagged with, with, with every car that goes in the garage? Uh, those that would be charged, I believe the ticket will tell whether they get out for free, the two hours free. I believe the ticket will be. Okay, okay. Again, again, again my, my, my point being that, so. These are actual revenues. That if, if you take out people that came in and will left in the two hours, <coughs> those are not. <coughs> Right, right. No, no, no. But my, my point is, my point is, is that what we would, what we're going to pay to the city, is it going to be just this? Okay, guys, that was history. Or is it going to be truly based on the cars that go in and out during the time? It'll be based on what occurs in June of 2019. So, so my point being, not only will we be adding 11 mile, but these are based on a normal, normal weekend days. Whereas not when we have a full free parking promotion going, so these numbers are going to be substantially higher. Also, there's an additional festival in June too. There's the there's the rocking rides. Well, there's rock playing rock glass, rock which we knew. Oh, rock but there's also rock and rides. Rock and rides. Yep. So we're going to be penalized for our promotion. Yeah, I mean we're gonna, yeah we're gonna. But, but, but even without that, just with the promotion of free parking, yeah. these numbers are, I mean, with it, with it being free, people are going to park. One, it's going to draw more people to town, which is what we want, obviously. But you're also going to draw people away from the meters into the deck. So, in, in, other, in other words, if, we, if there were no other festivals and it was the exact same business climate that we had last year at these times, these numbers are, are going to be higher because of the free parking. Anyways, and anyway, with that, no, 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 that's good, though. That's well, good because yeah, that's, yeah, anyway, but, but 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 the hey. <laughs> okay, so so the bottom line is the city, right? Right, okay. right. So I guess we'll just continue that discussion real quick yep. here. So we've allocated sixty at this right. point, and it looks to me like there's another thirty on the board based on those numbers. Well, if you, <coughs> and, and there's nothing in for 11 miles, so right. you'd have to add, again, using the numbers from a year ago, it's a roughly 67750 in parking revenue for three decks, whatever number we want to estimate for 11 mile. And then you've got... Well, you'd figure half a center street. Well, you could put forty thousand in, so then you're at you're at one hundred and ten thousand bucks just to provide free parking. Well, I, I wouldn't say as much as center, because center you've right. got the you got the, yeah you've got a thousand spaces. I would say you'd throw in twenty three, would be legit, and that's without increasing the parking. Do we know vacancy rates or anything for last year at this time? What's that? Do you know, like, vacancy factor rates for the parking? For no, like how, how, how full the garages were. Well, I'm pretty sure Center Street was never full. But I can't say that for a fact. Well, so anyways, we're just playing. Well, just to kind of open the discussion up a little bit further here, the... the are, are, we plan, discussing all, are we discussing it all together? This is yeah, like pretty little, much. This plan was free. just yeah. put together at the committee level, and we looked at a number of different options about, you know, whether uh, it should be uh, free parking for a week, whether it should be free parking for two weeks, whether we did four days a week on the weekends was an option. We even talked about three days a week on the on the option. So there, there. There's, there's some flexibility here if we want to adapt this. If, 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 if there's another plan or another idea, I think that there is some flexibility here. This was just 
Uh, and this was before we received any of these numbers. This is the first we're seeing these numbers. So we didn't have that opportunity. I mean, we had, we had a, an estimate, and that's when we allocated the $60,000. Now, obviously, this has gone beyond that estimate. So if, if, if the DDA wants to reconsider or readjust what plan is being put forward, I think that's, that's it's for open discussion. Well, and, and then talk, talk about this might be totally out of line, but seeing as how, you know, this is a joint venture and then the, 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 um, the deck, it's, it's celebrating the new deck. I think, I think we're celebrating parking in Royal Oak. Um, we're, 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 we're encouraging people to go to the decks. This isn't just a DDA thing. I think this is a DDA and city thing. And the fact that because we're doing it, we're going to drive revenues up in the deck, I think that we should at least get a break with regard to anything above and beyond what's, what's been here before. Um, and what I would hate to do at this point is start scaling it back. I don't think, the one thing I don't think we can do is take a certain deck out of the, of the mix. I, I think that just defeats the purpose totally. Saying. However, and I'm not, I don't have an opinion one way or the other, I agree with what you're saying. But is it maybe smarter to move it to a month where there's not as much activity happening, say July? In but 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 we're, we're trying to dovetail it with the kickoff. I totally agree. I mean, let's uh, like just pull out all the stops. And get as many really, the, the only month. event is is the one at the end, the, the the rock and rides, because the other ones have been here and. That's well, the other one I guess would be reflected in these numbers from last year because it was here last year. So the only one that's new would be. The rock and rides, or and um, when when is that event? I think it's the last. It's the th it's the third weekend in third June. weekend. Okay. Um, and refresh my memory. I deal, I deal with them. It's not based on parking, right? Yes. Yes. It's on uh, self-contained no. on the sixth. Rip fast move to um. Maybe, maybe the move is to take that weekend out of it. It makes it clunky in terms it of. It makes it very clunky. Yep, yep. That's the problem. And that was that was what was discussed was trying to put this plan together. We were trying to avoid because we wanted to put a, a promotions plan along with it. So it was <coughs> like, how do we? You know how do we how do we say this weekend but not this weekend and so forth and well, so forth. One, I have one last question. Budgetarily, you're you're using the ninety thousand dollar line line item that we had for this promotion, correct? No, 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 no. Uh -uh. No. no, this was what what's allocated right now is the sixty. This is going to occur in this fiscal year, not right. next oh, fiscal year. Oh, 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 oh. Right. Uh, so my feeling about it, at least, is either, either we do this, I don't think you can just dip your toe into this, or you, you scale back to a, just a Friday and a Saturday. I think we got it for Thursday, Friday, Saturday right now. That was the that? original. The original uh, discussion was Friday and Saturday, which then, obviously, we don't charge on Sunday. So right. that was a, you know, a three-day weekend. Um, so that was the original discussion. Um, then when we got the number with the estimates, the first plan, then we talked about including the Thursdays. Okay, so um, I, I didn't realize that. So that's five, uh, six, seven, eight. Well, the, the actual original discussion at the committee was to do it one weekend. Correct. When it opened. When it got here to the table, the board decided to try and do it for the entire month and sent it back to the committee and to have Sean put together a <coughs> promotional plan. So the initial estimate was simply for one, one weekend. One weekend. Yeah. The, 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 the thing I'm wrestling with is that, that the big selling feature, one of the big selling features of the end of June event was the parking revenue, at least for the DDA's commitment on that was the parking revenue it was going to bring the city. And now, if we're city still getting the parking revenue, but we're pulling we're <coughs> back into our wallet again, that's a little crazy. Um. 
Well, but, it, yeah, go ahead. The just cutting to the chase. There's one important question here. Is there any way to get some kind of a deal? Get some kind of contribution from the city slash parking fund, or is it? Does it have to be on the, all on the DDA? That's the first question. I agree. But, but particularly, particularly for the extra parking, like if we. Looking down the table here. <laughs> parking fund cannot legally give away parking or make contributions. The city doesn't contribute from the general fund to, to activities of this sort. Well, then if there's some way the city can contribute to us from somewhere else. <laughs> from the DDA, yeah. Well, then I suggest that we pull Thursdays out and we take the last weekend out and we just. First three weekends, and that's it. But the Rock and Rides is not the last weekend. So you, you don't thought it was the last weekend? No, it's the third weekend. Oh, Jesus. Mm. But so I would, I would just like to bring up, there was some discussion, because we did not know the exact date of, the, of which particular weekend, the deck was going to be open, okay? It's going to be June 1st. It's going to be June 1st, okay. For sure. There was some, <coughs> there was some discussion about it not necessarily having to be coincide with that. If, if this promotion was done the last weekend of June or 4th of July weekend, starting 4th of July weekend, it's still going to have a good effectiveness. It's still going to benefit the citizens. It's still going to benefit all the visitors. Okay, it's just not necessarily going to be tied in with the timing of the opening of the deck. Which I would agree with is not the end of the world because you can go with like a soft opening of it. People kind of get used to it. So. I mean, it, it, of course, it was real simple to say all of June. Um, if we're, I, I mean, for budgetary concerns, I, 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 again, I, personally, I don't have a problem taking Thursday out of it. Um, Mike, what? Well, Just, you know, I was doing some math. If we take Thursday out based on last year's numbers, it's about, this is without the new deck, okay? It subtracts about... About twenty grand. About twenty grand, but 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 Jay, you you can, you're gonna add in the new deck. So and, you're gonna add in about. You're gonna add in. You can figure adding in twenty five percent just on the promotion. Yeah, you're gonna probably alone. add in about thirty six to forty grand in the new deck. So well, I think that I think that might be high considering that the Center Street deck is a, a thousand spots. It might be. It might the only be. thing about taking off Thursday too is I think it won't coincide with the live music. Promotion too, which was going to happen on Thursdays. Those events. <coughs> do, do we have the money? Yes. Okay. Guys, <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb. You want to think about that? No. <laughs> I'm gonna, this, okay. Think of this as, as a marketing opportunity. We only get one shot at this marketing opportunity. Only one. The deck's going to open on, Je on June 1st. Uh, I think it's a wise investment. It answers one of the biggest problems that are the reputation of our city. I say we, we just we do it I do as it. proposed. In fact, I think that should be a motion. <laughs> we really have nothing. We're really not even on an agenda. I don't oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> No, I just think, I think at the end of it, you're going to have to allocate more money to We're it. You're definitely going to have to allocate more money. I mean, I, 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 Director Bagel brings up a great point. Um, it is our source of source spots, and this is a home run. And, not, you know, and, and, and thinking, taking my tons cap off and thinking like Director Bagel is, even with the event, you've got people coming from all outside of town and they're going to be like, wow, how cool is this? These decks are beautiful. This is nice. And there's a certain event promoter who probably won't be too upset with it either. <laughs> um, how 
Okay. <coughs> and I, I agree with Gary. I mean, uh, this is, I mean, at the last meeting we went pretty quickly from uh, the teens up to 60, I mean, in a, in a crack of lightning. So I think uh, to, to not look at this would be. And I also agree with Director Baglio. If, if the numbers are significantly more than what they are from, uh, presented from last year, that means we did a really good job of promoting the decks. And so our yeah, purpose I was served. I would, just, I would just say if there was a way that, you know, since, since, since the parking fund and, and everybody else would be profiting from our good work and our good promotions, that maybe there'd be some consideration on the back end one way or another. I mean, I don't know. <clears throat> All right. I just wish we didn't have to have an, an, an open tab at the bar, so to speak. Well, it, p perhaps what you want to do is, is insert a number in for 11 mile. And my suggestion was simply that you uh, round <coughs> off the portion that you're providing or allocating for the free parking be somewhere between ninety and a hundred thousand okay. dollars, depending on what you estimate eleven mile deck generating, <coughs> and just make a motion to allocate that for providing the free parking, and then you can deal Start with each of the those. three other items. Okay. Yep. 50, okay. So this has become 60. now it's become an agenda item. Well, it really needs to other yeah, than, yeah. I mean, it, I, it, uh, yeah, I, 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 why, why don't we, uh, I would say, I mean, I mean, ba based on this, again, since center is twice the space, it's more conveniently, it's more centrally located, I think we take 20 in, into 11 mile, okay, so <laughs> that, that, in my quick estimation, it's about 85, 26, 41, yeah. So are we looking for a motion right now? We, we are. Three. Did you? Yep. Plus 11. <laughs> Plus 20. Plus 20, yeah. So I, already, I <laughs> it's called, it's called 87. Okay, so, so 90 is... Uh, 87. So say 90. I would do 90. Yeah. Up to 90. I'm, Whoever makes the motion. A motion to uh, authorize or recommend that the Consumer Marketing Committee execute this amazing marketing opportunity with a budget of $100,000. I have a motion on the table for $100,000. For the entire thing? For, for the, park. the parking. For the parking motion. I second. I have a second by yeah. time. Yeah. Clarify, this is for the parking, not for the promotion. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So uh, we had a motion. Is there any discussion? Does that have a question? Dr. Johnson. If, if we're short, we support it. if that does not cover this, uh, what what happens? Oh, do we finally bond? You did a great covenants? job, and right, the tab closes at 100. <clears throat> I would say we would be legitimate in negotiating a fixed rate with the DDA, and for $100,000, I'd be happy to do that. Perfect. It's because we don't. We just don't want the open tab. Perfect. Okay. God knows. God knows. People be driving in out of that garage ringing tickets. All right. So now we have a motion on the table. Not for ninety. <laughs> yeah. This is deja vu all over again. Who? Uh, anybody else have any other commentary on this? Yeah. No. Seeing so that, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now the details. Number five, parking promotion plan. Sean. <clears throat> Consistent with the uh, free parking days of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday starting June 6th uh, throughout the month of June, uh, the Consumer Marketing Committee is uh, recommending that the DDA uh, support a plan in the amount of $12,000 to promote uh, free parking in the decks uh, for the dates that were agreed upon. Uh, this promotion includes uh, fees for graphic design, printing, uh, a budget for social media promotion, uh, print advertising, uh, 
which we receive quotes from the Metro Times and CNG newspapers, um, a banner fee to get banners uh, printed uh, to put on the new deck, the, the two of them to put on the new 11-mile deck, um, two banners to go across Main Street, um, and it looks like that's it. So that totals the amount of about $12,000 rounding up. Sean, real quick, um, what, what size, um, and I went through this and I had it before, but I'm, I'm here for my sister. What size are the banners that are going up on the new deck? Uh, two part question. <laughs> and number two, has somebody, do we, has somebody been up there to see that it, we can fasten and they're going to look good? So I need to work with DPS to figure out how we're going to fasten those on there. Okay. But in terms of the measurements, I worked with the planning department to get some rough numbers. Uh, the executive director and I had a conversation that we think it would roughly be about, I think we came up with uh, 24 by by 8, I believe, if my memory serves. Those, those are the two those are the two deck banners. The Main Street banners, I'm assuming, are going to be the strung across. Yeah. Okay. Right. Those are 36 by 4. That's a pretty standard dimension yep. for those. And how, how big are you going to say the deck banners again? The deck banners, I think we talked about 24 feet by 8 feet. And that oh. would actually go on a... a 24 by 8. So you're, you're not a full 10 yards long. And you're, what, uh, seven stories up. I mean, does that... I, I don't know. Does that... Well, the intent was to make it fit between the columns. Okay. And so it's basically, if you look at it, uh, one of the panels. Okay. I think that's what we measured. Yeah, we tried to, to have it kind of fit in with the facade of the structure. And, of and the you structure can see so the that... seventh story from 75. Okay. 11 miles. So uh, whether you can read it or not, I... Yeah, that's what I'm just wondering. Because it's just going to say free parking. Probably Thursday, <coughs> Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It won't put dates on it in case you want to use it again. Okay, so it'll just say free parking Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday. 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 Mm -hmm. Now, the ones over the road, will those go up ASAP or? Those will go up the week that we're doing the free promotion. So that's going to go up um, the first week of June, the Monday of the first week of June. And that'll, those will stay up all month at 5th in Maine. At 11 in Maine, it's going to come down um, to advertise something that the chamber had already reserved months ago. So the one at 11 in Maine is going to be up for about, I think, two weeks total. It will be four weeks at 5th in Maine. Okay, and, and those, those banners, will they say the same things, or will those have... It'll say, it'll say the, the same things. Free parking in the, in the garages Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So and, pretty and, basic. So in case we we basically kept the messaging fairly broad, because in case the uh, the dates changed or the promotion was going to be extended or, or done again in the future, we'd be able to reuse those. So sections. just just help me out here. When's the when's the so the first day the free parking will be in effect is what like June sixth or something. June sixth would be the first Friday. Yeah. Okay. So and, and I guess my concern is in order to affect really really, really get the bang for the buck here, is to get it out in advance so people know, not just driving it. If they're just driving into the city and they're seeing it, well, then they're just taking advantage of a free program. They're not coming here because the parking is free. Well, the, having the banners and having the immediate signage that's visible downtown, I think, is good for the people who are immediately down here. But we're right. going to have other things that are going to go out, like, in the last two weeks of May, such as the social media promotions. We're going to have a press release, uh, news articles. We're going to have it on the website. We're going to get the print advertising as well. So we're going to have all that other but and, and, and that'll, that'll, that'll be, be more out. detailed? That'll, that, that, more, that'll, that'll right. have the dates? Right. That'll what, have more detail. What about the billboard? What about what about what about you know for our for our advertising for using like don't we have with um with with our media placement don't we have a billboard somewhere? I met with a graphic designer yesterday who's going to be putting together a billboard that has all that information and uh, I've spoken with Outfront Media. We currently have billboard space on six ninety six and I seventy five. They said we can get them that creative at any point and they just throw it in the mix with our existing creative so it would just go in the rotation so we can add that anytime so okay we would add that in advance as well so we wanted to add start advertising a lot of this stuff outside of downtown like two weeks in advance just to get the word out. okay good and then when you're immediately down here we'd have signage that would be accurate so we didn't want to say free parking in the decks thursday friday saturday sunday and put that out two weeks early because that would create some confusion 
Yeah, okay, now that I understand. That I understand. But, but okay, as long as the, <laughs> the social media and, and, and the two-week-in-advance stuff has specific dates and, and, and whatever, yeah. or, or Thursday, Friday, and Saturday all through June, I mean, that, to, to me, that's, that's, that's more impressive than listing the dates, you know, and, and it's a lot easier. Right, and with quick signage, it's, you want to keep the words fairly limited. The, the, the last thing is, um, I'm, just, I'm just wondering about the banner size up on the deck, and, and what I... Uh, what, what I don't want to do is, is go, you know, we make the banners, we put them up there, and we go, oh, my gosh, these are, you know, they're small. Too small. Yeah, they're too small. I mean, I'd rather err on the side of big as long as they're vented properly and flapped so that they're not going to get torn off with any wind or anything like that. And even if they, dare I say, look a little gaudy, oh, well. I mean, we're advertising free parking, and it's only up there for a month. We can go bigger. I, I, I don't know if it's the right size or not. I don't know if there's, you know, some way we can... Well, if, if the one that goes across the street is 4 by 36 and we're talking about 8 by 24, it's, it's twice as tall. Uh, it's not quite as long by about 8 feet, so it's not little. It's not little, but, you know. And it's not going to How big are the ones that go across the street? I'm sorry, how long, how long are they? 36 feet. 36 feet. 36, so it's two-thirds of that. And twice as tall, and those are what twenty feet up, and this is going to be sixty feet up, seventy feet up. It'll probably be seventy feet up. Probably be two colors. Yeah, as long as as long as the letters are big. I don't know, Jay. This is your area. You tell me how, how big should it be. Uh, at I my think age, it'll, they should be sixteen be. feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> Gary. Um, because this ties in with the opening of the new structure, is, does Franklin have a role at all in, in helping us promote this? That's one question, and then I've got another one after that. They have a separate resolution that is, I believe, also on the agenda. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the next item. The other question I have is, um, is there a way to get all of the artwork, Facebook cover files, to all of the business owners in downtown Royal Oak to to just blast out everybody's Facebook page that you know that could possibly do it, whether you put it on a zip drive and walk it over or email it to them. Or, um, yeah, we uh, <coughs> that topic was even brought up at the last stakeholders meeting too. That uh, the business owners also uh, you know use the same hashtags that we use, use the same uh, social media graphics that are that'll be produced in this as well. So okay, that have a big effect. Then I had a question. Uh, I know we talked about what the signs are going to say, but it's going to be clear that it's just for the month of June on everything we put out there, correct? Correct. Because I want, you know, people who don't come here very often, I don't want them to come back and towards the end of July and go, oh, I thought it was free. So the banners on Main Street will yeah. say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so long as the promotion's in effect. So when the promotion's done, the banners come down. Um, the other ones, like the posters, the four by six cards, the social media graphics, that will all specify June. Yeah. I'm a little uncomfortable with that. We can change it. <coughs> I know we're trying to, to be, you know, to be able to reuse it, but I, I, you know, unless that, unless that banner comes down on Sunday, I, I really think you need to, to put, put June on there. I mean. I, I've done lots of banners over Main Street, and we've done lots of snipes, and you know, over the years, and covered up old stuff. If we got to do that, we got to do it. But I, I think it's very dangerous to not. Make I sure would agree. Sure. And we can, uh, we can and add June to the banners. I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. Even if you do it again, yep. I just don't want to hear, you know, from people who come back from Sterling yep. Heights and go, "Jesus, you know, you said it was free, and now it's gone." Yeah, you know, yep. I agree. I agree. <laughs> So, okay. So as long as we're real clear on that, but as long as everything that goes out to the public is real clear that it's Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. It's not permanent, right? In June. Well, and, 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 and I know and I know you don't want you don't want to gum it up. You want to get the message out there. But the bottom line is it is it is this is the grand opening. And I understand if you do want to use the banners again, putting grand opening on it does kind of queer the deal a little bit there. I guess you just got to stick to social media and, and for, that, for, for the message there. Yeah. Dr. Spain? I'm gonna, uh, unless somebody has something else, I'm going to move the resolution 
and allocate the twelve thousand dollars for the motion by director parking Safaya. promotion. I'll second. Second by Director Riley. Um, we can still discuss it if anybody has anything else to say. Nothing? Okay, I'll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody has to come up with a really cool name because hitting the decks was a pretty cool <laughs> name. <laughs> All right. Seeing nothing else, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. All right. Six, the parking deck grand opening. Judy. So uh, we are planning an event that's very um, sort of farmer's market library focus for those audiences. Um, it's on June 15th. Um, what we're planning is an event um, that begins at 7 and ends at approximately 4 p.m. Uh, that day happens to be the kickoff for the summer reading program, so there will be a lots of families um, in the um, uh, Barbara Hallman Plaza are, that should already be there for the summer reading program. So we're hoping to draw even more um, families to that event. And um, also with, and with the farmer's market, sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, with the farmer's market, we would like to give away um, 100 um, free farmer's market totes made right here um, in the US. Um, to the first 100 uh, customers, um, kind of uh, incentivizing them to give the parking um, structure a shot and also making it convenient for them to continue to use the parking structure by giving them a way to um, move their goods back and forth. And then um, we thought about giving, um, uh, raffling off, uh, putting stuff in the bags and you'd check your number like on Sunday to <coughs> see if you won market bucks. So encouraging people also to come back um, once they've shot, uh, once they've parked in the deck. So come back to the market the next week and spend their market bucks. Um, I, I'm pretty confident that when people think of a parking deck, they think of something that they visited in Chicago that's really dark and has all compact car spaces and lots of columns and tight turns and steep inclines and and signs that are confusing, like what, you're not sure which way you go to get out. And I'm really confident that once Farmer's Market um, patrons park in the new deck, um, they're, ex they're gonna be pretty blown away because the spaces are all big, there's not a lot of columns, it's not confusing, there's no one ways, there's no steep ramps. So um, we're just trying to encourage people to give it a try and we think once they park there, um, they'll, they'll um, continue to park there. Um, and then uh, tying, uh, we thought about um, for the people that don't park at the deck, um, still want to feel they want to park in a surface, surface lot, uh, trying to attract them to come over to the deck just to check it out. We thought we could set up some bistro tables at the top and serve um, coffee and donuts and let people just come and check it out, um, drawing traffic from the market to the deck, even if you didn't park in the deck. Um, and then to make, again, to try to make the summer reading program take it from great to greatest, um, our good, very good friends at Toyology um, will um, set, they get, do toy giveaways and all kinds of games galore. And we have, of course, we have the giant green carpeting that we use for the summer concert series. We thought about just making a cool little place um, for families and hoping if families come to that, that they that didn't know about the summer's reading program will find out about the summer reading program. Um, we have a budget for um, s social um, and digital advertising and posters, and it's totally cool to eliminate that because I have lots of tools in my toolbox. Um, I'm, I'm basically, my audience for this is residents, as I said. Um, I'm not trying to track families from Farmington Hills <laughs> to come here. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to um, make it something really special for our residents and showcase our gems, um, the market, and the library. Uh, we have another idea um, that um, Josh Cooper will present from Scoop um, that's more of a big picture regional idea. Um, but that's it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy <coughs> to answer them. Yeah. Just, just real quick question. So this this dovetails into the whole free parking thing, which which actually I think is great because mm -hmm. then you know the people there's more people coming. Actually, anybody that comes to my event 
will park for free, right? Because you get two hours, unless they stay more than two no, hours. No, 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 but this, this, is, this is a Saturday. It's a Saturday, so it's two hours of free parking before five. Well, no, it's free parking for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the deck. But would my people pay for, they wouldn't necessarily, they would draw a ticket and probably not. They wouldn't pay at all? Yeah, before. right. Even if it was, even if you didn't have the promotion. Oh, right. Of course, more people would, I'm guessing that my people are going to pull a ticket and then leave and get the free t two hours of free parking. Maybe. Oh, however, however it works. <laughs> yeah, great. yeah. So, um, and now, in terms of um, the only the only question that I have, and it's it's minor. So the top floor will be sealed off, obviously, for the, yes, for the top we'll, of the park, we'll, we'll, and the, re the rest will be open parking. Correct, correct. And we'll work with the police and DPS to make sure that that happens safely. And so the first hundred people will park. That's great. Okay. Any other questions, Judy? Nothing. Okay. Thank you. So back here. So this is uh, this is an action item on the on the two thousand. Yes, correct? sir. Um, I move to uh, approve the two thousand dollar ask for the amount. I got a motion by Director Riley, a second by Director Yazbek. Do I have any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, I call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those <coughs> motion carries. On to number seven. Scoop Pedicab Promotion. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Josh Cooper. Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, as a freshman at Michigan State University, um, I really started to feel a pain um, that a lot of my fellow students felt, which was the pain of micromobility and getting from point A to point B uh, cheaply and also doing it in an efficient manner. So I set out to create what we called the Scoop Pedicab Company, and we built a fleet of three-wheeled bike taxis, formerly known as the rickshaw or the tuk-tuk. And these vehicles drive passengers, especially students up in East Lansing, uh, from point A to point B completely for free. Uh, we built uh, another company called Scoop Pedicab Company, which is our subsidiary. And that, uh, the efforts that we carry out through the Scoop Media Company are to enable small businesses uh, to have a massive reach. And what we've decided to do is deck our vehicles out in uh, digital uh, electronic signage. So while we're giving rides around town, we're also promoting uh, large, we have large screens on the exterior rear end of the vehicle, and we have smaller interactive touch screens inside of the vehicle. All of these screens work to promote the marketing messages and the goals and objectives of local and national partners, um, as well as the municipality, um, specifically East Lansing. Uh, this program has been working flawlessly over the past year. Um, and last year, we brought up the possibility of launching one of our very own fleets here in Royal Oak. Um, after further discussion, we decided to table that matter and revisit it this year, um, which is why we are here today. Um, Scoop is proposing uh, bringing a, a two-cab fleet to the city of Royal Oak each weekend for the month of June to help solve the pain of uh, promoting um, marketing messages from the city, the DDA, uh, and beyond as well as providing free transportation and shuttle services to local pedestrians, as well as uh, driving more consumer traffic to local businesses. So what we are proposing to do is bring uh, vehicles from our East Lansing fleet to Royal Oak for very specific weekends in June, shuttle servicing um, any and everybody in the city for X amount of time. Uh, please see the uh, proposal for the proposed uh, dates and times. Um, I believe there was a request from the DDA to uh, expand this initiative to add more shifts and add more days, um, which I'd be more than happy to explore. Um, but the primary goal of this initiative is to give the city, uh, the local business owners, and the DDA a, uh, an avenue to promote all of the goals and objectives that are um, currently being explored. And uh, I, I was not aware of the magnitude of all of the events that are happening in June. Um, and I sincerely do believe that with the addition of Scoop, um, we could drive a lot of traffic to these events. 
Uh, more importantly, we could help to promote the uh, marketing goals of these events. Um, we would be willing to uh, turn over full control to our, of our digital signage to the city um, and the DDA to promote any and um, every and any uh, promotion that you would like. Uh, you would have full control of our digital signage interior um, and exterior. So if there are already um, graphics that have been created to promote these events, all that we would need to do is obtain that file, upload them to our vehicles, and while we're driving around, we could promote those marketing messages. Uh, so my purpose for being here today is to really understand a lot of the goals and objectives that the DDA and the city has for this coming June, um, and to try and figure out how Scoop could work to solve some of those pains um, and how we could drive some more business down here uh, in downtown Royal Oak. And this is all a part of a test trial for us um, looking at potentially placing our own fleet here uh, in Royal Oak permanently uh, later even this season or potentially next. Um, we're currently building out our technology company now. Uh, we're launching a passenger and driver app in the middle of June. Um, we're also expanding our reach into Grand Rapids uh, and Ann Arbor coming up this fall. Um, and I want to uh, ask any, any questions about what it is exactly that we do at Scoop or how we could integrate into some of the June initiatives and potentially help uh, the DDA spread some of these marketing goals and objectives. I, I have a couple questions for you before we get to that point. Uh, just, just uh, so um, you're looking for four thousand dollars from us for the for the month of June for the dates for weekend per weekend per weekend for the weekend, for the weekend. plus hotel. Well, that's what I was wondering. Is it included in in that? Oh, it's included. Yes, there. sir. Okay. And uh, and that also uh, includes. Um, w we intend on being very vocal about being here, and we have a very large following, um, and we would like to promote the fact that we will be giving these rides um, in downtown Royal Oak. Um, so that also compensates for um, advertising expenses to promote the, it's a cooperating av cooperative advertising campaign to announce the fact that we're here and also the goals that um, you are trying to promote during that. So, so I got a couple there's, there's, I'm sorry, I got a couple. he just said something. There, there, so there's no charge for the rides? No charge just, for the just, rides. Just tipped. Yeah, the correct. Tip the correct. Uh, we, we do pay our drivers hourly. Um, we do not charge for the rides ever. Uh, that's our, that's our, main focus as a business. Um, we create strategic relationships with the municipalities and with the local businesses to fuel this initiative. So based on the hours you're talking about, I did a little bit of math here, and then uh, mm -hmm. based on uh, how many, well, it, it, forget that part, I guess, but I guess the bigger question I have is probably for uh, Tim and Don as far as, how's liability work on this? Mm -hmm. the, we um so this was a a, lar a big issue that we uh, had to work with the city of East Lansing with um, last year when we decided to launch. There is a, a very specific state license that we have had to obtain, which is uh, from Lara. It's called the Peddlers and Solicitors uh, license. Um, that application and in in that license is what allows us to be a vendor on the road. So similar to not, not quite a like a taxi cab or a limousine carrier, those would be ruled differently. This is more uh, the type of thing that's a um, like a hot dog stand on the side of the road or a food truck, if you will. Um, and with the voluntarily um, entering our vehicle uh, for the free ride, um, it limits the liability even more. We do have to have a $1 million li limited liability uh, umbrella to have that application. Uh, we upped it this year to a $5 million umbrella. Um, so we do uh, take a, a lot of initiatives to, to limit some of that liability. Okay. I guess this is a legal question. If, if, we're, if we're footing the bill for this, are we in turn? Well, my, under, my understanding was it was with the city, and you were just providing right. funding to okay. it. Right. So the, the agreement would be with the city, okay. not with the DDA. And, and is that as simple as the, the city gets named as additional insured and something like that? That would be the normal way that we do on something okay. like that, but we haven't dealt specifically First with them insured. yet. So, so, so for the purposes of our discussion, should we assume the city's going to hash that out? 
That's my understanding of the okay. proposal would be that they'd have an agreement with the city. They're just asking <coughs> that you cover the. Gotcha. The do, you, do you have the rider sign? A release or uh, we we do not we have notices inside of our vehicles um, and like I said all of our rides are all of our passengers are very much voluntarily entering the vehicles um, given that it is a free ride um, it, the, the state of Michigan um, MDOT specifically in 2017 changed a couple of classif classifications um, so it used to be MDOT that dealt with all things transportation um, they only deal with uh, pat vehicles that move passengers greater than eight passengers at a time. Uh, so anything less than that is under a LARA Act. Um, there is something that was added in 2017 called a database carrier provider, which is essentially like an Uber or a Lyft. Um, and those have a provision in there where you must agree to the terms and conditions of the mobile app. Uh, so it's actually illegal to enter an Uber um, without using the app to obtain that ride. Um, so we've been able to kind of bypass some of those issues by uh, uh, covering ourselves in a, in a different classification. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, quick, quick, just a real quick question. Who, who from, for this, for, um, I'm not sure who's been involved in this from our end. Mm -hmm. consumer, a little what? bit. Yeah, I, I do want to clarify one thing because I think it's important to clarify something that happened in the consumer marketing Period. The reason that this is even before us was as we were trying to make this part of the grand opening mm -hmm. promotion thing. So our goal on this, and Tony can correct me if I'm wrong here, but our goal on this was to, um, we wanted to work with the vendor. Um, we wanted the, the four initial stops to be the parking garages. And then where they went in between is can be discussed or, or the route can be, you know, worked on. But we wanted, if, if there was nobody in the vehicle at the time, mm -hmm. we wanted the vehicle to go to the parking structure. And as people were coming out of the parking structure, pick them up and take them to do our donation. Go. Gotcha. They're their location. So that that's how this all came to be. <laughs> and I think, you know, he's, granted, you're you're looking beyond June and, what may sure. happen in the future and everything sure. else, and and what we were just concentrating on was the month of June. And and and, and I think I think I'm gonna guess that would still be the plan. But the bottom line is, once the driver takes that initial person, all bets are off. I mean, he or she can be told to go back to the garage when he doesn't have a fare. He or right. she doesn't have a fare. But if people are asking, I mean, they're out there. They they're not gonna say no. We're not gonna take you, right? No, no, I I get that, but, but, it, but was, the plan it was just a matter of is that we wanted them to be constantly, when available, to going constantly back to, be the to the garage. We and we we okay. have done events um, for specific uh, partners. Maybe it's a, cl a club on campus, or we do a lot of events for the city of East Lansing. Um, those are exclusive shuttle service events. So uh, if directed to do so, we will deny. Um, a specific drop-off location. So if it gotcha. were the type of thing where it was, hey, um, we are only going to this destination, this destination, or that destination, we just we just need to know that information from you yeah, guys, I think, and, I think and, you and that's no keep problem. Those in the CBD, obviously. I mean, if somebody gets in there and says, "Yeah, take me out to uh, Eleven and Campbell." Sure, <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, or, okay. The, now, now, in, in in again, I'll direct this to the the committee. Um, if we're going to do this, which I think it's a great idea, um, in order to do it right, one, I think we need to know exactly what we want the drivers to do. I don't think yep. about them turning down any rides within the CBD, mm -hmm. but but they need to know that they, you know, what, right. how far they can go. See, if we had boundaries yeah, uh, yeah. or a map that kind of showcased that, but, I think but, yeah, yeah, it, boundaries it would also be great and when, to and when they're free, because there's only two of them, head back to this garage or that garage. Mm -hmm. The other thing is... Who is going to handle to make sure that we maximize? Because if you scroll down and look at the picture, I think that the advertising feature of this is kind of a nice thing, particularly with when we're doing the free parking and what have you. So you basically got a rolling billboard here around town. And Correct, and that's included in our price. Correct. And I know it's included mm -hmm. in our price, but but who from our end is going to sell that? Well, that's a possibility as well. We we would we would allow for that. So, but but who from our end is going to be in charge of that? I mean, this is going to be here. In uh, what's the date today? Fifteenth in three weeks. Yeah. yeah. I I'll just add that we already have a very large 
stockpile of, of ads from the factory campaign. They also have uh, produced for us uh, parking promotional materials that we wanted to launch for the opening of the 11-mile okay. deck, too. So that could be an option. Um, is, it compatible, is it compatible with this medium? I, We'd have to get the dimensions. One back. one thing that I would be more than happy to provide is, um, I mean, I genuinely do believe that I'm in the business of economic growth and development, and when we do bring our fleets in, we do brighten up the atmosphere, and that's that's one of our main goals and objectives. I do have a, a, a rather large graphic design team and content creation team. It's it's not uncommon that we sell a an ad slot to a, maybe a mom and pop shop business that does not have the the graphic design means. So if there were specific messages that you would like my team to take the lead on to design, we have no problem doing that. We would do an unlimited amount of content, um, even uh, going deeper into that. I have no pr problem uh, having that team create content that does not go on those screens and could be used to promote the other initiatives that you have in June. You should have been on the agenda before. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> so, so, so the bottom line is, then, am I assuming, Sean, you'll be the one to make sure that, that we take, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, I mean, their, their logo's nice and it looks beautiful sitting there, but it would be a lot nicer with these two cabs wheeling around uh -huh. town every weekend. With you know talking about free parking in the decks, talking about what what have you, vegans and vodka or whatever whatever is coming up. Thinking, I mean, long term, is it something that you could expand for businesses to buy ads on? Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. Well, I think I think one of the we things is, is your goal is to come to town. Exactly, I don't think we, would we 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 would love to be in in, in the Royal Oak Market. Um, my my direct partner is uh, Eric Clark from Toyology Toys. Um, so it, I know it's an initiative that he's been working on very aggressively um, and, and would love to expand our footprint into, into Royal Oak. Abs absolutely. Can I ask about your normal business model in Please. East Lansing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My understanding, it's totally advertising supported. Is Correct. 100%. You don't get paid anything from the city or the East Lansing DBA. Uh, we, we do have a very, uh, uh, an incredible relationship with the municipality. Um, the city of East Lansing has been so supportive of us. Um, they actually give us garage space um, and storage. Um, granted, we, we do donate a, a substantial amount of uh, free advertising inventory for them to promote local events, local messages that they have. Um, but yes, correct, it, it, it is all advertising fueled. Okay. Gary, did you have something? I did. Um, during this month-long promotion, is there a way for you to collect data on, you know, the busier times, yes. times when they're, so that you have a, an accurate sense of Perfect. when they're needed? So we, we, we do a lot on the, on the data end. We, do, uh, we collect two types of data. One is on the mobility end. One is on the uh, impression and advertising end. Um, that's data that specifically the city of East Lansing would love to have. They have no idea how many people are in their city. Uh, for instance, on like a football game day, the only way that they're able to gauge that is based off of how many parking spots are taken up. Uh, so we're working with them to really understand how many passengers that we're moving. We're also working with our advertising partners to make sure they understand how many people that we're bringing to their businesses. So um, if there was specific data that you would like us to collect, we can certainly add those to our in-cab driver forms. So those are forms that our drivers complete at the end of every shift, and it showcases a summary of where they went that day. I do have uh, GPS trackers and asset trackers inside of every vehicle, and I'd be more than happy to print out breadcrumb trails of where exactly the cabs went each weekend, each day, each shift, um, or for the month, we could compile some kind of summary, um, and I could get data on the mobility end as well as the advertising impression done. Okay. Tell them how you can Absolutely, yeah. So the in, inside of the um, inside of the cab uh, is a is actually a touch screen. Um, so we, we we do a lot of uh, fun things in, in East Lansing where you can maybe take a selfie in the cab, upload that to your socials. Uh, we loop through um, local news updates, weather updates, ESPN updates. Um, one of the other things that we can do um, is is go pretty in depth with the interactive element. So we could collect data in the form of surveys. Um, if you did want to get an idea of who got into our vehicles, <coughs> we could uh, uh, obtain that data for you and. Uh, Maybe we could do like 
whether it be a, a, a weekly or biweekly or at the summary of the entire campaign, I'd be more than happy to compile some kind of report of all that data, who we moved, where we moved, the duration of those messages, um, and how many times they played, how many people got in the cabs, how many people interacted with those ads. Um, the main uh, the main thing for me, and one of the things, one of the reasons why I think it works so well in the city of East Lansing, is because of how much communication we have with the municipality. So they're very clear on where we can and can't operate. We work with them, uh, we meet with them monthly. Um, so if there was specific data that you would like me to collect or any specific initiatives that you would like us to add, we have no problem doing that. One well, last question, what happens when it rains? We have full weather canopies. Um, so if you can see on the picture of the vehicles, um, those are retractable canopies. Uh, more importantly, when it does rain, we do bring a canvas rain fly over. Um, what we have found is, that's actually a la last year's model. You check out ridescoop.com, you'll see the, the newest model of vehicle. Um, the new cabs, uh, what we're finding is um, when it does rain, uh, those are our peak hours. So last year when um, it was a bright, you know, beautiful blue sky, sunny day, everyone would say, oh, it's a great day for scoop. Um, and it is. But today, um, what, especially in like the fall when it's that gray sky, misty, wet, cold rain, what we're finding is people want to get to where they're going faster. So they want to get in. They don't, they don't mind, you know, putting over the blanket and just get me there faster if it saves me the walk. Uh, so we, we have the ability to shield them from all the elements as well. And all of our cabs are, are fully weatherized. So that screen can operate in the Arizona desert, the Michigan winter, all of the elements. It can get rained on, snow, sleet, you name it. One, one last question. Is, 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 is our, um, and, and I understand that your, your business model is um, you, you don't charge for rides, mm -hmm. but, but for, for, for the month of June, do we want, but, you know, because, Somebody like myself who's been in you know, pedicabs and, and this type of thing in Chicago, Toronto, whatever, I'm used to paying. And at the end of the ride, I would say, right, how much do I owe you? So now when somebody says, how much do I owe you, do you say nothing, we never charge you? Or are they going to say this is courtesy of the city of Royal Oak? All, all of our drivers, we technically don't call them drivers. We call them brand ambassadors. <laughs> um, so every single business that we um, promote gives us uh, at least a one-page document on all the bullet points we want okay. to provide. Um, for instance, right now we have a campaign going on uh, with Great Clips um, in East Lansing. Anytime somebody gets in, what, the main question we get asked is, how is this oh. free? Right. What, right. What's the deal here? Right. And uh, all of our drivers know to say, well, at Scoop, we, we strategically partner with local and national brands and businesses, and this ride happens to be sponsored by Great Clips today. P perfect. So it'll be sponsored by, and, and, and the, the, the talking point will be part of the part of the parking garage grand opening yep. month. Yep. Yeah, okay. As, lo as long as we had that information from you guys, uh, maybe bullet points you want us to uh, um, feed to those drivers, that's, that's what we do best. Okay. So we'll make sure that but we'll make sure that's taken care of. Mm -hmm. And and like Sean, I said, it, looking, Sean, I keep looking at you. Oh yeah, no, we'll we'll make sure that it all corresponds with all the talking points that we want to do. We want to make sure that we try to integrate these things on yeah. all points, just right. so it's not so just joint. Right. I mean, so it's, yeah, if there's information to get out, <laughs> any opportunity we have to interact with the public, yeah. I think is a good opportunity to get that. Information. This thing's kind of taking on a life of its own. I mean, we we started off with you know for, for free weekend in the deck. Now we're doing the whole month all decks. <laughs> we got signage. Yeah. We get we got Judy's event going on. We got this. It's all great stuff. Right. But we just got to make sure nothing falls through the crack, and we want to take advantage of it all. Mm -hmm. and, and and we'll do a lot to to promote some of those initiatives as well. Um, like I said, um, my main purpose for being here is just educate me on exactly what you would like for Scoop, where we can fit into that entire marketing mix, um, and we'll do what we do best. Um, I will. Uh, I can. I'd be more than happy to share my contact information. Um, we can be in, in contact. I'll be your direct point of contact. If there's anything that you want to sub send me, um, we are, uh, our screens are online always. Um, so one of the initiatives we're working with the city of Ann Arbor is tapping into their Amber Alert system. If there's any messages that we need to s uh, spread in real time, uh, we can do that on the spot.
So I'd you guys be, cool with going to Ann Arbor with all your slanting backgrounds and all that? I know, right? It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's tricky territory. Uh, Tony. Um, a point of clarification, when we, we talked about this in our subcommittee, yep. and we were provided a proposal that spoke to three to four cabs for $2,600 a weekend, and the proposal attached to this agenda is two cabs for $4,000 a weekend. Can you, what happened with that? I think the original proposal was for less, was for two, was for Friday, Saturday, and this one is for Thursday, Friday, Saturday to coincide with your free parking. And then the other thing is, is in, oh, you're here Sunday too? Sunday is in there as well. So you oh, can take out Sunday, I guess, if you wanted. We also have a provision in there where we, we eliminate 200 uh, per shift that's eliminated and 400 per day that's eliminated. So this is a customizable proposal. And we, uh, and, yeah, and, and then the other thing is I think Eric Clare, who's like, I told him he's like my stepson, um, he, I think he thought that these pedicab uh, drivers were all going to be able to stay at my house <laughs> for a weekend or something. They I can't. don't know. He was hoping that I could somehow work them out, um, free rooms for those four days, and I failed miserably at that. I yeah, I mean, you, can't, get them. you can't give them f f four days for four no, weeks. I'm hoping we go for it. A foreign exchange student is bad enough, but four <laughs> pedicab drivers uh, was a no. So, so the, 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 the way here, then the original proposal you gave them was for two days, is for four days. And this, okay. and this includes. This the, includes the Sunday. Which this yeah. and this includes their hotel accommodations right. because he, they these guys, according to Eric and Josh, concurred. These guys are going to be wiped out at the end of the night, and we don't want them to drive back to East Lansing. No. And we, we have shifts ending at midnight and potentially later. Right. Midnight's on the weekend. Yeah. And then Sunday, Sunday's just a 12 to 3 mm -hmm. shift. There is also a, 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 an expense line in there for log logistics of transportation. Um, we will need to rent trucks uh, to bring those vehicles in for the weekend. I think we're going to leave this Sunday in there because it's just, I mean, at this point, it's just the exposure. So are we limited to two, or can we get three or four? We can We we can bring in more. Absolutely. Like I said. Well, there's a line that says most we can deploy from our current operations is two cabs. We can bring in a, a third, though. Hundred percent. Our our understanding was just that there would the the GDA preferred more days and less cabs which is why we reflected that in the proposal. But if that's something that you, you'd like to be tweaked. More kind of less days. The only thing I will say about Sundays is mm -hmm. because it is free parking, and so you get a lot of downtown employees that are parking on the street, and it, it, it's, it's actually not bad to have someone here on a Sunday. I know it's, it, it doesn't directly tie into the garages, because they're free that day anyhow, but I'm just bringing that up. It's very busy on Sundays down here for as yeah. far as parking. And in June, right? every day is free, yeah. every weekend day. Yeah. No, I know that, but I'm, I'm just saying Sundays as, in the, as a rule <coughs> are always I'm busy. I'm not clear. Now. If you add a third cab, does it add to the line item? It, 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 the, the payroll expense would be added. What, what would that be? I believe it would be approximately 200 for that additional cab for that four, hour, four to six hour shift. And we could potentially s squeeze them into the same accommodations so we could keep that lodging expense the same. Is Friday from 11 to 3 a popular time or something? to maybe have three three cabs in the evenings and not earlier in the day. If he brings them, he probably brings them. Sa Saturday, Sunday, maybe three cabs Saturday, Sundays. Might be the best way to proceed. Maybe you say, you mean, you mean maybe go from Friday, well, if they're going to be here, gonna, if the cabs are going to be here, they're going to be here. So here's the deal. We, we've got to we got to figure that out, and we got to allocate enough to yeah. amount today. 
I, I like the idea of three cabs. The, the, only, the only shift I think I might take out there would be the like, time is the Friday the 11 Friday to 3. 11. In my, in my, in, and you would like to so eliminate that Friday 11 to 3 at a cab. Am, am I hearing that the Thursday also eliminated? Or no, wait, the Thursday shift. Okay. Thursday 5 to 11 is great. Okay. Um, I don't know. What do you think? I would go three cabs. Cab on Friday and Saturday. I would go. Th I would go three cabs Thursday too. Thursday, and Thursday in June is big, big. And also, guys, don't, don't forget it's not just the rides, but it's the exposure of sure. one. One. Finally, we got pedicabs in downtown, and it just it, it, it adds. I mean, let's face it, guys. It adds to the um, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, it's yeah. culture. It's energy. Yeah. I mean, dare, dare I use the word hip? Sure. <laughs> And we, there's also pro, promo good distribution too. If the, if there were flyers or um, we do a lot of cooperative ads, if if there was a, a relationship with one of those other events that had a, a fee for tickets, um, and they were willing to maybe a lot a couple that we could you know pass out to a couple lucky passengers, um, it's it, it's it's another avenue for us to cross promote those other events and the other initiatives that you guys have. So, 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 real quick, Josh, we're not going to hold you to it, but, but mm -hmm. for budgetary purposes, so we got this in front of us, four, four grand per weekend. Da, da, da. Let's say we wanted three cabs throughout, but the only thing we were going to we we're going to wipe out the Friday eleven to three. Yeah, offset. Instead that, of four yeah. grand, just give us a rough of what it would be per weekend. So you're eliminating one shift and adding a cab. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, I would. And you're squeezing everybody into the same accommodations. And on in that cab's now going to be here for four days. Correct. Okay, so that's going to be. I think we could we could do that for. Uh, do an ad additional, five hundred. Okay, so so forty five hundred, so, eighteen thousand, for the month. Yep. If anybody doesn't have any questions, I move to. There's a resolution on here. Well, what's the resolution? Yeah, I put an amount to exceed, though. Yeah. Not yeah. to exceed. Where's the resolution? Be it resolved. Well, the, the, there's a recommendation to get some more marketing. You can, you can add in your dollar amount to that. Okay. Well, I'll go with that at um, 18000 yeah. for so, the month. So we have a motion on the table uh, as, as put here with a, a max of 18000 Do I have a second? Okay. Second. Second by Director Baglio. Do we have any other questions or comments? No. Uh, last comment. Um, love your business model. You. Your presentation's awesome. Thank you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. We gotta. We gotta find a time to get all of you uh, taking a ride on one of these cabs. I had known you were. I was in East Lansing like a yeah. month ago at the at the college bars. So that's a whole other story. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Seeing none. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you so much. You need Excited. to get the shark tank is what you need. <coughs> Thank, right. you, yeah. Thank you. Hmm? All right. At this point in our jumpy agenda, I'm going to move number 12 up here right after this. Uh, number 12. Number 12, the recommended architectural firm. Uh, the infrastructure committee met, uh, and Julie from the planning office is here to kind of walk through the recommendation from the uh, committee in regards to uh, architectural services in the uh, second street uh, deck for that commercial space oh, oh. and it's still okay you can sit through the rest of the meeting don't feel like you oh have yeah to, don't feel like yeah. you have to leave after <laughs> you've been this coming time. and going yeah <laughs> well hi everyone um my name is julie sherhard i'm a newish planner uh, with the city, been here about two months now, and working on a variety of projects, including this one. Happy to learn more about the DDA. Um, most recently, was in the city of Grand Rapids, um, working for their planning department. So um, I didn't really prepare any uh, points, but I, I guess I should say that we um, you know, had this RFP we released uh, maybe about a month ago, looking for just architectural services to um, design the center street, you know, first floor space to a white box level that could, you know, start being used. And um, I think previous discussions, the DDA had talked about using it for event space, maybe staging area for a variety of things. Um, 
So we released this RFP. We got four responses. Three were local firms. Um, we did get one response from Epstein Global, who is based in Chicago. Um, the two firms that we determined that we want to interview were um, Von Staden Architects. They're based in Royal Oak. They're kind of a smaller boutique firm. And um, Fusco, Schaefer, and Papas, they're based in Ferndale. And you might know them as the current, um, they were the architect for the new development on Troy um, that is happening in Ferndale. So that is going to be, I believe, Ferndale's first um, parking structure, and it's going to be mixed use with some sort of retail on the ground floor, and I think there might be um, a component of multifamily as well. So we had those interviews um, on Monday with representatives from the infrastructure committee, and um, you know I believe we, you know both both firms were um, I think under budget in terms of maybe what the DDA had allotted for just the design services. Um, but the committee felt that Fusco, Shaver, and Papas had more of a track record, being now actually the architect of record for the city of Ferndale for ongoing projects. I think they have a three-year contract. Um, and I think they they seemed like they sort of understood the project more from a structural standpoint, being you know located in the ground floor of a parking structure. Um, and the Von Staden architects you know, had great energy and had a lot of um, vision. But I think based on what the consensus was that the DDA had just about kind of getting it to this first level where the DDA can utilize it, maybe long term, if it's completed more potential you know commercial occupants could sort of see themselves in the space but as it is now it's a dirt floor and it is not very inviting so I think it's that first step in getting there um, I'd be happy to answer any other questions that you have I believe Tim might have distributed the memo um, in hard copy since it wasn't able to make it into the uh, digital packet yeah you should have a copy of the memo we handed out from the the committee, uh, the total contract amount would be forty-four thousand. Uh, there is a resolution there if you support the committee's recommendation uh, for consideration. I would envision we would simply sign a standard uh, AIA contract uh, after it's reviewed by the city attorney. So, uh, anyways, really? <coughs> my only question. This is I guess for the table. Um, this 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 space. Um, I guess I guess my question is, we're, we're, this is forty four thousand dollars just for the design services, correct? How do we know what we want? What if what we design isn't <clears throat> the best use? I mean, are we going to put it out for lease? Are we going to do events with it? Are we looking for uh, an incubator? Are we going to subdivide it? And how do we know that what we design, after we spend forty-four thousand dollars, then somebody comes along and says, "You know what? I'd love to lease that space from you guys, but it's designed like this, and or it's built like this, and I'd want to do it like that." I guess I would ask Tim if he doesn't mind just to run us through kind of a very short chronology of what this being the first step and then yeah I, I think the discussion that's gone on both at this table and at the committee level is that this space has been empty since the deck opened a little over a year ago uh, it has been shopped for various tenants to to look at and I know that I think there's been a couple that have looked at the space I think before we sent the RFP out the board decided that we should at least uh, white box the space, meaning basically you're going to put a concrete floor in it with some sort of flooring. Uh, you're going to finish the interior walls, put some sort of ceiling in it, and, and probably sufficient bathrooms to handle an assembly type use. Uh, and then the question will be is are you going to put any uh, kitchen food prep type thing and you'll you'll have an opportunity to make that decision 
when you get into the design development phase. So as far as the space being designed that somebody wouldn't want to use it in the future, I think uh, a lot of commercial spaces you end up with a white box and then the tenant can see what they can do with it and from there. It. You, I don't believe the intent here is to design a space with interior walls divided up, but if you if you at least get it to the the white box phase, you can send it out for bid, see what the construction costs are going to be based on that, and then then you can actually start using it. Um, sure. Whether you find a tenant or not, I think the decision before we sent this RFP out for bids was we want to start using the space. And if you find a tenant that wants to take half of it, great. Um, and they can build that out. Uh, but I don't think the intent of where we were heading with a design construction is going to impact the flexibility of of a, a tenant coming in. Fair, fair. And, and, unless you decided it, the design development to do something I didn't hear when we before we sent the RFP out. So, um, anyways, I think your big decision will be whether or not you want to put any kitchen uh, uh, space in it. And I think that's one of the reasons the committee recommended the firm they did is that they've looked at the space and they're currently in charge of some commercial space and a parking deck that's being built in Ferndale. So they've got some, they should be able to give you an answer on whether that's going to be possible, very costly, or you should forget it or go with okay. it. So I, I think that's one of the reasons the committee recommended uh, also. So to answer your question, I don't think this space is going to get designed so it precludes somebody in the future. You're, okay, and so, so this and this is like, um, and this is not meant to be snarky or anything like that, because um, stepwise, the way this would go forward is if you and, and this has gone to the city commission to get permission for the DDA to design this space. Once you have a design, and I believe somewhere in June, uh, that design will get presented to the city commission as well to make sure that they're in concurrence because the city does own this space. At that point, if they're in concurrence, they'll get to construction documents. Once those are ready, it'll go out for bid. Depending on the dollar amount when that bid comes back, uh, you may fund it, and we'll ask the commission to give you permission, and you'll go forth and, and build the space out. So this could very easily get rolling in July based on the schedule. It, it, to, to, I believe the con the architect said this was probably what a two to three months build out. As yeah. I recall. Mm -hmm. Total layman when it comes out, but but um, you know I realize it's a commercial space and apartment. But does does it does forty four thousand dollars for design um, fees? To white box something does that sound logical? I I, I don't know. Um, it, to me, it well, sounds like a lot to white box something. Shirley Smith and Jason both were involved, and I don't think they had a concern with the fees uh, as architects. Uh, they were part of the committee. Jason's not here today, so I don't want to speak for him. Um, we spent probably three hundred and sixty thousand on designing a parking deck. The, the DDA paid for a little over the, that. I had the same question. The, 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 that I understand. The bids came back, and they were all oh, pretty much the fairly comparable. Okay. Category. I figured that obviously must be the. From well, a layman's point of view, I, I mean, I would think like, okay, you pour a floor and I, you put some walls on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's the whole mechanical system needs to be included as well, and I think that's a key component. Just the figuring HVAC out and exactly figuring out how it's going to fit in within the infrastructure of the parking right. deck. So it's more than just putting up the walls, you know. Yep. Um, so I think that... But they all were about the same? <clears throat> it was. It just seems like a lot to me. Anyways. What is it, 10,000 square feet? 5,800. Not even, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Seems crazy. Well, there's a motion here. Everybody so chooses. I, just a comment here. I, I will say this: is this uh, this came back 
to the infrastructure committee from this table. Uh, and at that point, there seemed like there was a consensus that the space needed to be white boxed. And that's when we took it upon ourselves to go the next step and go through this process. So um, I don't know if that's changed at this table, um, but I just, the committee has done its due diligence. Mr. Chairman, I'll move the recommended motion. Got a motion by Director Johnson. Do I have a second? A second by Director Bangler. Do you have any other? Any other discussion? I just wanted to mention, along with what uh, Julie said here, the, uh, um, the the two firms that we did uh, um, interview, um, we were we were somewhat conflicted. We spent a lot of time talking about it back and forth, uh, and I think if we were, you know, looking at a bigger project, we we might have gone a different direction or something along that line. But I think for what we were tasked to do at this committee level that this firm was probably the one that uh, uh, would get us there uh, to where we wanted to be. So, and I would add just that, just uh, knowing Jason and I know Shirley as well, that if there was any red flags, they would have yep. definitely posted them. Yeah. Any other? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really. All right, let's go back to number eight, live music promotion. Hey. Consumer Marketing Committee uh, reviewed this proposal that actually originally came from two business owners uh, that, uh, who were referred to me by the city manager. Um, they wanted to put together um, a weekly promotion of live music in downtown Royal Oak. Uh, so I've been working with them over the, the past six weeks uh, to develop something that I think would, would be um, something very practical that we could implement uh, very quickly uh, and, and also make uh, a, a pretty good uh, and positive impact on the downtown. Um, I'll just say that the heart, at, the heart of this at the heart of this proposal is the idea that um, we're generating original content that creates a very positive narrative about downtown Royal Oak. And essentially what it is, is the DDA would fund uh, promotional activities uh, for uh, private venues that have live music in their, uh, in their restaurants. Um, so basically, we would just kind of come alongside uh, live music that's already existing in the downtown, and we would kind of create an umbrella, uh, kind of an overarching brand that would promote this um, as a downtown Royal Oak uh, effort. So basically, we would, we would try to establish ourselves as a center of live music in the region. Um, it would be something very positive. It's something that's already being done in downtown Royal Oak. We were just, we're just basically capturing it and putting a face on it. Um, so it's, this came to the Consumer Marketing Committee, and it originally came in two phases. Uh, the first phase was promoting existing live music in downtown Royal Oak. The second phase was um, actually programming public spaces with live music. Uh, the committee determines that uh, that second phase still requires maybe you know, some more fleshing out in terms of detail. So they recommended uh, the funding of the first phase of this proposal, which is uh, $3,400 proposal to get a graphic designer to produce uh, basically a brand around live music in downtown Royal Oak and also uh, cover expenses to promote it on social media for a 12-month period. Any questions? Just real quick, the, the buskering part, now that's going to be revisited by the Correct. Committee. Correct. Yep, that'll be revisited once cool. there's... We, we talked about a lot of public spaces and we realized one of the public spaces is the alley. It's right next to the construction zone. Another yeah. public space will be the future park that's here. So some of these public spaces haven't come online yet. Um, you know, a couple others uh, in front of the library, you know, construction zone. We're also looking at, you know, Baldwin Mall that's next to a residential area. Are there any better spots for that? So um, the group that I was talking to, the group of business owners also concurred that they just wanted to see how this initial promotion happened and then after that they'd have probably enough feedback 
uh, with which to determine where to go with it. You know, maybe there won't be a need to schedule music in public spaces if, yeah. it's, if it's just well on its own. So The, the, the one thing that I, that I would urge you just to keep in mind, and this it hasn't been a problem of late, but you mentioned, you know, um, near residential zones. I know in, in the building that I live in, it uh, goes back 14 years ago when we moved in, uh, there were a lot of street entertainers that would play out there, which is not a problem, but some of them would go until 2 in the morning on, like, Thursday night, and, like, there was one, <clears throat> one of my neighbors said they had a saxophone player um, under her window, like, till 2 in the morning constantly. Yeah. So it's just, just as long as, and, and obviously that wouldn't be something that we condone, right. but, 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 but if we are setting up street buskers out there, you can guarantee that others will flock and, you know, get their right. buckets And that's, that's which, one of the reasons which, why which that... Which is okay as long as they stay within the, the, the ordinances. And, and that was one of the reasons why that was dropped from the proposal is we wanted to actually see how, this well, how well this would do initially. And then we could revisit that, and then we would have to do so in a really orderly fashion just to make sure it stays under control and mm -hmm. that it's not just an open invite to madness. Uh, just a couple quick points uh, for clarification. Um, this is not just for restaurants. I, we, we did agree, if I'm right, that any business in the downtown that wanted that would commit to an ongoing Thursday night music promotion in their establishment, that they would be included in all the marketing, all the promotion, and everything else. So it's not just a restaurant thing. Um, anybody could do it. Um, and then second thing I wanted to point out was that um, um, this, this dollar amount and for this promotion, if you look at it, this, this is for a 12-month period. So this is, this is going to be an ongoing promotion for an entire year. <clears throat> um, and it's basically not promoting any specific restaurant per se. It's promoting Royal Oak as an entertainment district. And it, it, it's going to be impressive as opposed to you seeing uh, Mr. B's featuring so-and-so tonight. It's going to be impressive to see this list of businesses and who they're featuring and using that as a, um, you know, a, the music lineup, uh, if, if for lack of a better term, um, that, that type of thing. Um, and I think with the, the social media aspect of it, I think there's room for expansion of this. Um, but anyway, for, for the, I'm in support of this. I, I think that this is um, um, just marketing per se 101. Are you in support of it enough to make a motion? I am. <laughs> I, will move the, I will move the resolution the before us. <laughs> I, I got a motion by yeah. Director Safaya. Second. Uh, second by Director Yesbeck. Uh, any further discussion? Well, the only thing I'll point out is it's coming out of budgeted funds. This isn't an addition. Um, you know, the DD or the DDA had approved about ninety thousand for a concert event that has since been canceled. So I believe the intent's to take this out of that allocation. I'll just add that now that we have pedicabs, this is one one more thing that we could potentially advertise in the digital advertising. So yes. to say that there's no shortage of things we can promote. So. And it's less than three hundred dollars a month. All right. Any further discussion? Say now. Call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, on to I believe spectacular. All right. Yep. And Sean. Um, the consumer marketing committee is uh, recommending that uh, three sixty events uh, be contracted to manage uh, the annual spooktacular event uh, for a three-year period. Um, it's basically the most succinct way to say it, but it'd basically be extending her last year's contract for the next three years. Um, so that would be this year's, you know, it, it would cover 2020 and then 2021 would be the last year. Um, the, uh, the DDA prior has acted as a sponsor in the amount of $10,000. Um, this upcoming year's budget to begin on July 1 also has a figure of $10,000 in the budget for 2019. So there was no discussion of any future budget allocations for 2020 and 2021, just to be clear.
And uh, Tony and I met with Julie, and it was our opinion that uh, it would be advantageous for her to get sponsors and whatnot if she could have a longer term to this. Um, and I think it's a good idea, and I think she did great last year in this project, so I'll support it. I'll move to approve. Motion by Director Riley, second. second by Director Baglio. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Okay. Uh, destination downtown. Sean, the up and down story of destination yeah. downtown. As you can tell, I've done a lot of writing this week. Yes. So. Um, we have an opportunity through Main Street Oakland County to utilize our annual technical assistance funds and annual training funds um, for, to bring in a special guest speaker uh, who's a nationally renowned uh, downtown consultant. Uh, he consults with not only downtown DDAs, city governments, but he also consults with uh, small business owners. Uh, he's worked with over 80 downtowns. Uh, he speaks regularly at the National Main Street Conference. Um, I think he's, he's a fantastic uh, uh, wealth of knowledge and experience with a lot of these things. I think it would be a huge morale boost to a lot of our business owners, and I think it would... Uh, also, uh, I think give them a shot in the arm in terms of uh, helping to strategize uh, for themselves. Uh, basically, the philosophy behind this is that uh, you know you can employ tactics to become a destination downtown, uh, which we know Royal Oak already is. But I think it's important to to stay sharp. So I think this would be a, a wise use of you know our technical assistance funds, um, you know, for the benefit of our uh, downtown business owners. I think as a courtesy, uh, we could also open this up to uh, you know, to the to the region, you know, and also invites other downtowns, uh, downtown managers, downtown business owners from neighboring communities. I think that would be a really good uh, public relations move to to let them come down and experience downtown Royal Oak. Uh, see that we've brought this speaker in. Um, I think that would also have them interface with our parking system, you know, face to face too. So, I think it would introduce new faces to downtown as well in a very positive way. Um, so. We had uh, reviewed a number of venues. Um, the, the executive director and I conferred a lot about that, and uh, ultimately the uh, decision was that Hyatt Place would be a good venue uh, for this. Um, they'd also be able to provide a room in the same building for the speaker for that evening, um, also provide the conference space, beverage refreshment throughout the day. Um, I'll say that uh, I did talk to some of you in the business marketing committee yesterday. We were having kind of a back and forth with Oakland County over some of those details. Um, I just wanted to uh, to report back on that is that we are we've reset the original course, so we're back on track with uh, Oakland County Main Street will be covering the full eight thousand, which is the fee, um, and they would also handle the contract between them and the speaker, too. So we would basically just be the hosts. So, so basically, it, it, it's really about a $12,000 total, and we're, we're only going to cover about 3500 of it. Correct. OK. Um, so, and you're, you're comfortable with everything else, with, with the, the situation in terms of? The yeah, I, I spoke with Oakland County in depth this morning. Um, we had a bit of a back and forth, but uh, ultimately, my, my concerns were, were allayed. So, okay. I think uh, I think we're back on course to have a really positive event. Okay. Um, I know that there was talk of Lake Orion doing something similar. Um, I was able to to speak with the county, and uh, they assured that it would not be something that would compete. They wouldn't even they would make sure it didn't even occur around the same time as okay. well. So they would push that off, which uh, I think I think was good enough. To I was comfortable after that moving forward. So. Director Johnson. Uh, I move the resolution. We got a motion by Director Johnson. Second. And a second by Director Bagley. Any other discussion? Just real quick. Yeah. Um, was there, so did you have discussion um, the time of day on this? And, and did, is this is July, it's set for July 24th? It's set for July 24th. It's going to begin at 8 in the morning. Okay. Um, it's going to have coffee, all that stuff provided in the morning. It's going to go to about noon. There will be an hour break for lunch. Then reconvene uh, about one o'clock, and there'll be kind of a 
open round table where you there'd be a kind of a Q and A session and everything okay. too after that. Thank you. Anything else? Got a motion seeing the motion. I will no other discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, handicap parking spaces in the CBD. Uh, the infrastructure committee um, took on uh, this discussion at its May 7th meeting. Uh, you recall that DDA does serve as the city's parking committee, uh, and that's why this is really in front of you for discussion. Um, the committee, I guess, the short synopsis was at this point is simply recommending uh, that the DDA forward a recommendation to the City Commission uh, to have the Commission direct staff to look at adding handicapped spots in those locations of the CBD where there are angled parking spaces and that includes those that might be 90 degree. Uh, what I would point out is the ones that are proposed for the west side of the 11 mile deck uh, there will be four handicapped spots added in those as part of the opening of that deck. Uh, the ones we would look at further would be the ones adjacent to the Edkin building. Obviously there's uh, handy, or angle parking all up and down Washington, uh, 7th Street, and then there's a small portion on center uh, between 4th and uh, basically adjacent to Veda. I believe that covers all the angle, but we would we'd identify where those are at um, and uh, see where we could add uh, uh, handicap spots on in those areas that uh, 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 could provide uh, additional uh, parking. Uh, the committee did discuss uh, parallel and concluded that, uh, uh, that, uh, that they weren't going to recommend that at, at this point because uh, uh, they're not accessible. Uh, in the sense of, of that, it would simply be a designation of uh, uh, reserving a spot for someone with a handicap placard. Uh, they don't meet uh, any design standard uh, for handicap uh, accessible spaces, and that's the, really the term I want to meet. Uh, it's they're, they're, they wouldn't be accessible in the sense of providing a safe zone to get out or uh, ramping to get onto the sidewalk. So. Uh, it, it could lead, and the committee felt it could lead to a, a false sense of security and, uh, and not protect the individual. So the committee, uh, as I understood it, and I think they can speak for themselves, is, is not recommending uh, that uh, that go forward and that we simply, re the DDA simply recommend that uh, the commission consider the angle spaces. Director Riley? Um, this is, um, I've listened uh, for a while now to a lot of the public comment, um, read stuff, and um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused. Um, I, I like that we're going to go ahead with the um, angled parking and, and, and do stuff then. I think the timing, you know, couldn't be better. I mean, there's obviously um, a, a, a clamoring for it. I think that with with the um, addition of the new parking garage, you know, there's there's, there's plen plenty of room, and the more spots that we can make accessible on on the on the streets, the better. That people don't have to go to garages. So I guess my question is, um, and I'm sure you guys have all heard this: when you go to Birmingham, and you go to the parallel spots, they put a blue meter up. And they put, they put some blue stripes down, and they make it a handicapped spot. So my question is, are we going, are, are we making this determination with regard to not doing it for the parallel spots based upon the committee's interpretation, or are we getting legal advice from city council saying that these are not accessible spaces, and Birmingham's rolling the dice? That if somebody were to park there um, in a handicapped van, um, and an accident were to occur, they're liable because it wasn't accessible, or if there's no cart or sidewalk cut up. I guess what, I, what I'm asking is, do we really know what the law is here? Is it simply painting a meter 
blue and putting up some stripes? Or does it have to be, you know, such that when, when you open the door, you're not coming out onto the street and there has to be a curb cut out? Just, I think Tim can answer this better, but I, I just want to give you a, a little bit of perspective from the uh, committee's point of view is we had, I think this is what, what overwhelmingly uh, convinced me. We had two architects on, the, uh, on our committee at the time. They both have designed big projects within the city and outside the city and everywhere else where parking was involved, okay? They both specifically said that they would not be part of something where they would put a handicap sign on something that was not a true handicap spot, meaning being handicap accessible by all the requirements. So they weren't comfortable with it. Birmingham may be comfortable with it. Um, it sounds like they are, obviously, because they're doing it. Um, but, uh, you know, on, a, on the other spectrum of it, I think the committee, yeah, we want to get as many handicapped spots as we possibly can and, and would, would be willing, would, is ready to convert any spots that <coughs> could into those handicapped spots. I don't know the legal question to that answer. I mean, maybe we can, I don't, you know, we, we did get some material on it from the city attorney, but... Um, but I guess I guess I wonder, and and I mean, gosh, and and believe me, I'm not. Uh, you, you guys, you guys have done yeoman's work on, on on all this stuff. But is there some like is there a quick answer on this? Like, do we go to the ADA? Do we go to the state of Michigan? Do we go to the federal government? I mean, we are government. There's got to be some way we can get an answer once and for all. And and and, and if the answer is, hey, there is not. There is not a simple answer. No. There's not a simple answer. And, and, the and, law and, is and, very and unsettled the, on this. If, if the answer is, yeah, it's a big liability to put it up, put it out there, and if somebody were to get hit and it was a big accident, the city could be is very liable. Then we need to let people know that. Then we need to let people know that instead of keep on taking bullets like we did today, that 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 we're doing it out of greed, because that's not the case. We want to do it. Right. This board up here, I know everybody on here wants to do it. We want to add more handicapped spots downtown, but if it's legally not the right thing to do and not safe, and not safe, then we need to let people know that. But but we need to make sure that that, that, that we've got the standing. What we really need is for the ADA to establish standards. Absolutely. And, and, and the correct standard might be to identify that there are different levels of handicapped parking needed. Not all handicapped people are in wheelchairs. Uh, that's, that, and, I, and I read that in there, the difference between a, a permit, yeah. I mean, yeah. So maybe in addition to the standard handicap spot that we mark in blue, there should be, you know, another type, you know, for a non-accessible but reserved spot, but there isn't right now. You know, if you put out the blue, I think you're saying that it's a handicap accessible spot. I wonder, I mean, it just seems to me, and, 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 and has anybody looked at other cities? I mean, uh, how does I, the... I was in Birmingham last Friday. Okay. And uh, I, I will tell you right now, I would not go in a parallel handicap spot and go out into the right of way into the street. I mean, it, it, to me, it's it's silly. I mean, my mother, if I ever heard my mother had parked in a spot like that, you know, the, the angle parking, maybe so. But even then, you have to, from that angle spot, you got to somehow get from your car to the sidewalk. And if you're in a wheelchair or if you're in a walker, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're, I think that concerned us too was is that if you took Main Street and say you were in the middle of the block, right in the center of the block between 3rd and 4th, and that's a designated handy spot, if, if we were to make it a designated handicap spot, when you get out of the car, in order to get onto the sidewalk, it seems like you have to go all the way down to 3rd or all the way down to 4th. Can, um, in the street, since since what we're since what we're doing here is we're 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 turning our recommendation over to the um, commission, and right now it's going to be like the the angle end of the angle parking spots. We're going to look at the um the side of the Ekin building, the um, west side, particularly the um, southernmost spot there. So we'll look at all. Of them. Okay, at all of them. Can we also just ask them 
to look at the parallel issue, and and we can say that 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 that, that we don't. They're, go they're going to look at that. Or they're going we to ask them to or not. I'll guarantee. Okay. <laughs> well, but but but, but, let, but but look look let's 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 put it in there, so that the people who show up at our meetings and who watch it on TV know that we're that we're looking for the answer, that we're just not shutting it down and and. Out of ignorance. Well, and I, and, I, and I don't think anybody is shutting down the idea of, of, of looking at having handicapped spots uh, based on some standard. I think when you just do it not based on an acceptable standard, you do. And I'm not an attorney, but you do open yourself up for litigation. And, and, and if that's and, the case. And anybody can litigate on anything. Sure. And, and I've been involved in enough litigations with the city where uh, if you just do it and, and you can't justify why you did it and, and, and you're representing something wrong here, I, I would want to be testifying why, why you did it. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think that, that we would be looking for a, a standard to push back to, to to say that, and you can look at other standards uh, in the ADA that, that are there. Um, and, and there was I, a communication in there from the city attorney uh, that, uh, Mr. Johnson, if you scroll down further, that uh, um, in the re in the report that was very, I mean, it's very basic. Part of it was predicated on a Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals decision, uh, where a city was sued for failure to provide on street a diagonal spot. So he's suggesting that we at least look at diagonal or the angled spots, and I think that's what we're going to do. But. If you read through it, he even says, I'm not certain how accessible on-street public parking can be provided in a parallel parking area. So it's not an opinion, but it's, as I said, I don't believe you're going to provide accessible spaces. You can paint it blue and, and reserve it for somebody with a handicap permit, but that doesn't make it accessible. I didn't read the case, but I, I have to agree what's being said. If you're looking for a rule or, or guidance, this court seemed to suggest that the trend is that federal law requires local governments to provide accessible on-street public parking. So they made a point of saying accessible, which goes to uh, Tim's point. If they wanted to say something beyond accessible and just have, like, Birmingham reserve spots, they would have said something like that, but they didn't. They said accessible. So to me, that's the, the court suggesting that that's the only way you should be considering on-street parking is if it's accessible. Okay. There is a resolution here. Yeah. Director Uh I'm going to move the resolution as written before us. I'll support so we had a motion by Director Safaya. We got a second by Director Johnson. Do I have any other commentary? We're convinced that the, that the commission will still look at the, the parallel issue. And, and again, I'm, but believe me, so far the only thing I've heard or seen myself that says, yeah, do, do the parallel is because Birmingham's done it. And I agree that's not a good answer right there. Horrible answer. But, 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 but can... Well, let me let me just. Staff is looking at how I was to just accomplish. Say that. Okay. I, I don't. Okay. Whether yeah. the whether the commission directs us to do something okay. else, we're looking at how to to address it. And I was and, just going to say. That. And, and okay. even if we even if we were to rebuild a road, what would be the best way to add handicap okay. spots on it? Okay. So I, I don't think you need to add anything about okay. looking at Fair it. Fair enough. I think the city commission I'll is going come. to do that anyways. Okay. I, I, um, anyways. All right, any other comments? We've got a motion on the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Johnson. I apologize, but I have to excuse myself. I've got a 7.30 budget meeting in this room, and I still have some things to finish for that, and I need to eat as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess you're excused. <laughs> Be much longer. I was, was going to say the Consumer Marketing Committee. Uh, I think uh, at least committee updates, the Consumer Marketing Committee, I don't, I think we, 
We got just had, we had that meeting, infrastructure, we had that meeting, business marketing. Real quick, um, we looked at the um, RFPs on, on, on the PR guys, narrowed it down a little further, and we will be conducting interviews one-on-one -on -one with uh, this, probably about a, n a number, a number of the submissions. There were a lot. All right. Uh, oh, and ho hopefully, hopefully we will have a recommendation at the next meeting. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Tony, do you have something? We did touch base on the Chile event. Is that we can discuss at a future meeting? Or? Yeah, I think so. There's well, the Chile cook-off event yes. is in your budget. Yeah. You, part of your Sorry, yes. promotions event budget is you've, you've allocated funds for it. So no we just, we discuss. just we did, yeah, yeah. We, could, the we could update them, but it's, it's, yeah. it's already been budgeted for. Fine. Uh, but uh, we do need to give Sean his time. Oh. And your time has come. I'll, I'll just say that the, the vast majority of the things in my report have already been covered by the earlier committee reports and above resolutions. So I think most of it speaks for itself. Is there anything you'd like to, to highlight? Um, I'll just say we had a fantastic stakeholders meeting at the Royal Oak Music Theater. They were great hosts. Highest attendance yet. I think we had over 40 people. Um, wow. So, uh, and then uh, public relations services, I think, again, uh, we're scheduling interviews for May 29th. The wine scroll is sold out. Is it really? Royal Oak Bloom was successful despite the weather. And I think that's it. There's a special event permit for the parade. Um, make sure everybody makes it to the pancake breakfast from 7 to 11 at the Farmer's Market. Are you cooking? I sure am. And uh, the Royal Oak Dining Series, I believe, has been uh, that. Yeah, I, I, only, I only added that on because Stephanie was before you last month to indicate that she's withdrawn from further consideration. All right, with that, uh, Director Krieger isn't here, but I'll oh, no. entertain a motion to... Uh, so moved. So moved by Director Safaya. Do I have a second? That's what I want to second say. Second by Director Yesbeck. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Good night. So the